Frequencies are open. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shield of Tomorrow, our Star Trek RPG show here on Geek and Sundry. Uh, this is our first uh, night uh, here at the Monday time slot, 7 p.m. So it's our season, or, uh, season opener, as we like to say. Um, so it's good to see everybody. Uh, it's yeah, I was just telling the, the, the players, it's weird starting at 7 because the workday only ended like an hour and a half ago. I'm used to like that good four and a half hour block. And by the time we get here, I'm usually exhausted. And I don't know, it's just like, anyway, it's weird. It's weird, man, it's weird, it's trippy. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into our announcements. Um, so the first announcement we have tonight um, is Star Trek Adventures just released a free quick start on uh, Drive-Thru RPG. So if you're interested in what it is we're playing, Drive-Thru RPG has a free quick start guide to the rules and how they all work, and you can download it completely for free on Drive-Thru RPG, so go check that out. Um, this Friday, cool. October 26th, uh, at 9.30 p.m., is that right, Sax? This Friday, is it already the 26th this, of October? This, Dang, I just paid rent today. So <laughs> sorry. Crazy. I don't know why, I don't know why. Where have I been this Oh, I know why. I, 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 sorry. The uh, October 26th is another date uh, in time. It's oct October 6th. <laughs> Indeed. October 6th. Yeah. So this coming Friday, October yes. 6th. Um, uh, we have a special one-shot episode in place of Gather Your Party. We're going to be playing Tales from the Loop. So uh, tune in for that. It's going to be at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> and uh, our friend of the channel, Kelly Lynn, is going to be coming in. And she is going to be running us on a game that we've play tested for two games now for some backstory. I finally get to play. I finally get to do some RP myself. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We had Dragon Sparks, our, our artist for the for the episode, was streaming was live streaming drawing our, our kids today. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to show you the I'll have to show you the proofs that she sent because we have our kids like our portraits are done. It's, really? Yeah, yeah. I'll show them to you. I'll show them to you after the game. Wait, you guys have you guys have art and you've been practicing it. This isn't going to be a show. This is going to be a, just a one off. I hope it's a show. This is a backdoor pilot, right? You guys are doing a backdoor I hope pilot? so. Usually, like, what we like to do, because this is how Eric's TBD RPG got launched, is mm -hmm. if we want to try something but we're not sure, we'll do, like, a one-off. Or every now we and then we'll just, everybody like... everybody here into letting you do it. Yeah. yeah. We trick it, and it's a good excuse to play, to play you know, some role-playing games. And if, and if it doesn't catch on, no big deal. We had fun, but if the audience likes it, that's how Dread happened. Dread happened on International Tabletop Day, and the audience was like, uh, I'd like to see more of that, please. And... Bam! Smart we have place, we have dread. <laughs> I just thought that so. was gonna be a show already, and I was like, No, oh, I want to guess. We don't know yet. In like a couple months, like I want to be. That looks like fun. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. I'm hoping it becomes a show. Kelly is awesome. She's Kelly's a great so DM. Good. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to playing. Um, so as always, a special thanks to Anovos for supplying us with our rad Star Trek uniforms. They just announced the pre-orders for the Discovery uniforms, which will be coming out next summer. I have to get it. They look so pretty. I have to get it. I, I got the it. civilian version today. The civilian <laughs> version, yeah. But at least I'm in the right colors. That's right. I was going to say, you have totally dressed up. I love it. Um, yeah, Hubble and Puffs. on that note, we're actually uh, sending our love out, of course, to Star Trek Online. We have giveaway codes tonight. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We're going to be Ooh. sending those out to our alpha and Twitch subs. So um, just stay in chat during the break, and we'll see about getting you some codes. See if we can get you a temporal agent pack. Um, let's see if Rick Bud can slide in coffee without letting anybody know. Is that coffee or is it tea? Is that hot? He didn't. Nobody knows he did it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well done. Well done. Dexterity on the show. Um, you did good. So, uh, oh, and uh, since we're talking about Star Trek Online, our play along. Um, by next episode, we will have the date for our play along. It is going to be this month. We're going to be doing it in October. Um, uh, <laughs> fans have specifically requested that uh, we get Gina through the tutorial. Oh, yeah. so, that, <laughs> so that we are not uh, we are not caught uh, the way we were last time uh, running around yes. through Victoria. Although we had a very great dance party at the Starfleet Academy, uh, right in front of the George and Gracie Monument in San Francisco Bay. Good I was times. still attacking Borg, so it took me That's a while right. to get there. That's right. It said Bonnie, who was attacking arrival. Borg. I was like, guys, wait for me! Stop dancing! I, I thought you were having a conversation with Norwell Nash, but I guess it I guess it was really. I guess it was just Borg that you were you were actually engaged in. Admiral. Nor Admiral Norwell. Admiral Norwell. Because Norwell Nash isn't yeah. actually... I feel like <laughs> there's so much wood being snapped in my direction um, right Snape now. Snape Larry Mouse Twitch, go. Real quick, I have to give I have to give a shout out real quick too. Um, uh, there is a show coming up on Alpha starring Whitney Moore. I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to announce it. I think we want to launch a trailer for it first to kind of surprise you, but I'm just going to tell our Alpha audience and those who are interested in trying Alpha out, uh, 
we we did something completely demented. We gave Whitney the keys to a car, not literally, but basically to make a show. Yo, that, this is how excited you should be. This is, it, it I, I can't say too much more. Yes, I am excited. Else, but it looks amazing. It is. It is absolutely demented. It's. It's. Uh, it's. N- <laughs> I'm trying to. Ki- I've told people today. I'm like, if Geek and Sundry could make a more kind of like '80s thrash style, less dark version no of "Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared." <laughs> anyway, I'll just leave it at of, that. Those were a lot of buzzwords you just. Lots said. of buzzwords. I'm trying to drum up hype here because I'm really excited about the show. You don't need to. All right. You so moving on, we're gonna move on. We gave Whitney the keys. The end. I gave the Whitney end. the keys. To, yeah, I gave Whitney achieved. more a show. <laughs> We gave Whitney more show. That should tell you everything. Uh, also, quick lore correction. Last episode, I made a boo-boo. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it out. Uh, Steamrunner class was not in service during the Battle of Wolf 359. The Steamrunner class only came into service during the second Battle of the Borg. Wolf 359 is what spurred the Federation to yeah, build we- escort ships. Get out. I know. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for Get watching. Get out. Um, wait, wait, wait. You've now been track checked. Wait. Yeah. Maybe we're not in the... Prime timeline, oh, after all. <laughs> <laughs> Two options. You would like that, wouldn't you? We're either full on Kelvin or. Remember that time when uh, the crew of the Enterprise went to the 1980s and showed everybody, uh, what was it, like clear aluminum? Oh, transparent aluminum? Transparent aluminum. Centuries before it should have been invented? <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened to that timeline? That's a timeline. I don't know. We, right? need, we need a Gilding Crates and Wilderness Center dead story. That timeline was pretty much the same. Except for that, that class of I'll starship I was find, present. I want to find out what happened to that guy. And like, what the, life he led after have, that. Have what you heard happened? the Nerdist and Glorious Bastards timeline theory? No. no. That yes. Glorious Bastard is an actual Star Trek movie because <laughs> it uh, follows in the uh, city on the edge of tomorrow yeah. timeline. If on they the had we would love that, that time. Oh, on the edge of forever, thank you. I By the way, look up the gif of Spock taking out a Nazi. It, it will completely <laughs> fulfill you. Um, it's a great gif. They did that shit in the 60s, dude. Yeah. 20 years me. after um, WW2. <laughs> so years. let's see. Um, I think that's all. Does anybody have any cast announcements? We're going to jump into the game pretty quick tonight. So does anybody have any cast announcements? I'm going to save it for next week. Okay. Yeah, I do improv, whatever. <laughs> Look her up. Oh, her Twitter. Uh, uh, I do have a quick one. Yeah. Uh, I for folks who, uh, if you happen to see me on, on when I'm sometimes on Collider, talking with the Collider Heroes crew, uh, I will be uh, at a panel in New York with them on Friday. Oh, for New York Comic Con. I am mostly not going to be at New York Comic Con, but I will be at that panel and hanging out a little bit afterwards to to with that crew. Um, if you it's are able crew. to come say hi, so I will post all those details. But yeah. Yes. I have an announcement. Um, some of you may know that other than Shield of Tomorrow, I have been on a sci-fi RPG show on this channel called Vast, which is jammed by Jackson Lansing. Woo-hoo. Jackson Lansing is going to also be GMing a one-shot on Saving Throw show this Sunday at 5 p.m., and I will be on it. Yay! Sweet. So go check it out. Um, I guess feet. I guess to close up, Number I should give you the gift that Piper's twin sent us. <laughs> what? They just like pepper what? and sandwich what? gifts. What? So I'm gonna just go ahead and. Uh, oh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh dear. Here we go. Oh dear. Oh dear. Sam's no, about to be no, broken. I'm totally going to keep my head together. I, just, I really am. Uh-oh. I really, 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 really am. I really adjust your sound system. Ooh. Oh! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! What? Oh what? My what is goodness. it? We can't see. Thank you so much. Piper Twin says, hi, Sam. Oh, my goodness. Smiley face. I thought you might like this. Smiley face. Okay. I think you're right. What is it? Okay. We can't so, see. So, I don't know if you guys know, but I have, like, I have a few dice. <laughs> oh, yes. Just a couple. I have no. just a couple. And it's, it. I'm not going to say it's a problem because it's completely not a problem. Just a couple of But it's kind of yeah. a storage <laughs> problem because I've broken extra large dice bags. From the Ooh. number of dice that I have, and I don't have enough dice bags no anymore way. for my dice. Is that what that is? I that and was so a I have <laughs> a super cool handcrafted dice bag that, that I is... have had an eye on and love. And that thank you, Piper's Twin! That's hilarious. Thank you. All right. You're good, Internet. I'm excited! Yeah. It's been a hell of a day, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't we jump into a future where we're all the best versions of ourselves? Yes, please. Let's get started tonight's episode of Shield Tomorrow.
Okay, welcome back to Shield of Tomorrow. Sorry, I was just thinking, we were just joking before uh, we came back that uh, uh, the, the the theme song to the Federation should be, Why can't we be friends? Well, you were joking and you were I laughing was, at your own joke. Yeah. I was, that, that's it not was unusual. Really it was really yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. laughed with you, Eric. I you, laughed you would with be you. amazed at how funny I find myself. Throw an RGM under the show. I, no, no, that's... No, it's that's, endearing. It's great. I, I've gotten in trouble at, at so many gaming tables because I've laughed at my own jokes so hard that I would go into tears and they would ask me to step away. At I'm least you share with the class. I appreciate that. Hey, yeah, no problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Keep it in your head. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's uh, just go ahead and jump in. Yeah, because I'm still laughing. I can't stop. It's funny. Um, I'm so clever. It uh, so, <laughs> Aren't I clever? Um, so when we last left off, lots of stuff had taken place. Um, Everything from the discovery of the organic plant life object on the neural gel packs inside Jeffrey's tube with Jiv, to uh, the Sally Ride being ordered to the Shackleton Expanse at Narendra Station at Starbase 364, to the mysterious man who appeared in Rue's mirror right before they were getting ready to go to bed that night. Um, to a strange message sent to one Ensign Lark Sage from someone who apparently not only knew how to hook, uh, hack the computer systems mm -hmm. of the USS Sally Ride to deliver a secret message and install the file on your computer and everything. Even I can't do that. Yep. But apparently has knowledge of not only where your mother is, your birth mother, supposedly, but has images that they sent you. So had access to footage that supposedly has her. Um, every fiber of Sage's being tells her that that was her mom, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from the dramatic stuff going on um, and our poor doctor trying to adapt to her sick bay not only being demolished, but losing, <laughs> losing the one, this would be the first unknown life form that she had ever encountered. Um, having that whole situation happen and watching it die in her hands and then having to adjust afterwards. And then of course the abrasive encounter with Starfleet intelligence. Um, yes. I want to follow up on that. Okay. Can uh, Captain Martinez have had a chance to, to have just a little meeting with the doctor? Because I remember when that was going down, Martinez was trying to let you know, I will try to explain things further as soon as this is all I remember you, you had know? said that. Yeah, so yeah. while everything was happening and it was chaotic and they were pulling everything away, will have there been a chance from the end of last week's episode to now where yes. like- Yes, we, we can RP that here. Okay, We great. can say it's, uh, after the departure of the Sally Ride, you can have a conversation with him. You can walk into the sick bay. Uh -huh. um, I will say, <laughs> just between you and me and everybody here on the internet, that Captain Martinez will have tried to tell the doctor literally everything Martinez knows and is speculating about why that was classified. Okay. I sh I'm, not, I'm not supposed no, to not be doing supposed that. No, you're not supposed to do that, but that's a... Okay. And I'm doing it. Cool. Ooh. So Martinez is going to trust Dr. Shishiro's with the most confidential, above everybody's pay grade information and my own speculation. Because again, myself, the crew, we didn't have the... the 100% of the information about what Regular One was doing, what right. the Genesis project was. Right. Still, it's still pretty vague. All you know is yeah. that it was a weapon. Or it was it was it was, inf it was, uh, Fujisaki it was told weaponized. You that, yes, yeah, it could be weaponized. He told you that it was a terraforming uh, yeah. torpedo or weapon that, or project that could be weaponized. Um, so that happened. Um, so you guys also had a very interesting conversation with one admiral, Norwell Nash, which had an interesting outcome, to say the least, revealing a side of himself that Rue may not have seen coming. Um, also, a, a very a very interesting reunion between a Vulcan and a certain Betazoid ambassador. Hashtag it's a date! <laughs> um, of what do you speak? I don't know. She but, has uh, no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, not too long after y'all were brought back to the station, the Sally Ride was sent off on a six-month mission in deep space. Um, six months because it's going to take the Sally Ride uh, precisely... Let's see, I have it written down here. I should have probably highlighted it. To get to the Shackleton Expanse? To get to the Shackleton mm -hmm. Expanse will take the Sally Ride approximately two months, one week, two days at Warp 7. Wow. And then we spend a couple months there and then come back. Yep. Or is it a six month mission there? Six month mission. So it's two cool. months there, two months while you're there, and then two okay. months back. Where are we approximately starting out? 
Uh, you're in the vicinity of, the, well, let's see. You guys were at Starbase 138. 138. So that's kind of in this, not not close to, but in the same vicinity of DS5. You guys have been kind of like bouncing around in this area for a while now. So it's a good long trip across. Plus, here's the other thing that you're going to have to contend with. And this is a point of information that, at this point, the Admiral would have informed the crew about, specifically you, Captain. Um, even though the Kittimer Accords has been called off, there's no open hostilities between the Klingons and the Federation. Yet! <laughs> um, <laughs> as a result of that, certain parts of the treaty, even though it has been dismantled, um, there, there are certain things that have not stopped with the Klingon Empire. For example, trade hasn't necessarily come to an end. The Klingon economy is kind of depending on a lot of materials coming through. And the Federation is counting on a lot of those remaining connections to sort of foster back that alliance, hopefully in the long run. Mm -hmm. One of these is Neandra, Neandra Station. Uh, or I'm sorry, Narendra. Narendra Station. Narendra Station is located on the other side of Klingon space. Um, it, this was a station that was founded um, in cooperation with the Klingons <clears throat> shortly after, uh, specifically, I can actually tell you, uh, Narendra Station is named in tribute to the massacre of Klingon colonists at Narendra Three, who were killed by Romulans. The station is a symbol of Federation and Klingon alliance. It was developed after the Federation's doomed defense of the colonists at, and the Klingons' defense forces to maintain a presence on the station. Specifically, a ship called the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701C, sacrificed itself to defend uh, Narendra Three from a Romulan attack. And the Klingons have never forgotten that. Um, it's one of the reasons why you are probably not going to have to concern yourselves with being stopped. What year did that happen? Oh, I have the year written down, but it, it was a while back. The Enterprise C, I want to say that was something like 30 years ago. Okay. And you said, who, sorry, who defended who from? Well, the, the Federation, the Federation yeah. responded to a distress call from Narendra 3. Mm -hmm. Defending? Defending the Klingons. The Romulans. Klingons were from, Romul okay. from Romulans, yes. And the Enterprise C was destroyed. Um, all hands lost, or at least that was the reports. We know, we as watchers of Star Trek know that's not true. That Out of character, yesterday's Enterprise? That's correct. Okay. Oh, yeah, yep. I, didn't, I didn't catch that. Yep, that's that. correct. <laughs> yesterday's Enterprise, one of my favorite episodes. Okay. Guinan is so good is that in that episode. Happened? What's that? Wait, they were defending. Sorry, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that's what that was about. I don't mm -hmm. remember that yeah. the episode. Enterprise C was pulled out of time. While trying to do that? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So they were being that's sent fine. back to defend it, and that was going to stop the Klingon Federation War. Mm. So, anyway. Go watch this. One of the best episodes of TNG. It is. Um, so you guys are being sent down there. There is a corridor of safe passage through Klingon space that the Klingon Empire has allowed the Federation. Um, that we have to go through to get to that's the correct. Shackleton expansion. You have just, to go straight through the Klingon Empire. One more time. Can you tell us how Unless many, you want to go around it, which will uh, triple one, your time. Klingons, one week, two days. Thank you. Yeah. Now, the corridor is still, you are still given access to this corridor in the spirit of the cooperation for what, you know, the, the, the Federation sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Um but the Klingons have made revisions to the permissions they're allowing Starfleet through this corridor. Okay. Specifically, only science vessels are allowed through now. Okay. And Starfleet has also warned you that the Sally Ride might be stopped on occasion. That's fine. Um, Klingons might want to bully you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You That's are fine. the Federation and you're no longer an ally. Uh, so This might seem... A bit of an odd request, but knowing this before we leave Starbase 138, mm -hmm. is there a specific alcoholic beverage that Klingons like? It's blood wine, right? Yeah. Blood, blood wine. wine. I want to make one. sure we're stocked with <laughs> a lot of blood mm -hmm. wine. Okay. Because Smart. it has been in my experience that when you have to undergo Sweet. these stops and searches, that it helps to oh my gosh. offer these in peace greeting or even... It helps to just have them on board and, oh, no, they got confiscated. Enjoy your blood well, wine. I, I tell you what. as we go through. I tell you what. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Okay. Because I, I already see where this could go, and I want to go with it. So we're going to do a retroactive scene here. Mm -hmm. Because there was a long period there where your commander was alone with the Admiral, having a pretty intense conversation. Yeah. Well, that would have left Martinez with a lot of free time to process the orders, get things prepared, Knowing that you're going through this corridor in Klingon mm -hmm. space, 
um, you decided to hunt down some blood wine. Yeah, I'm putting in that request. Is that is that an officially sanctioned like? You can totally drink? do that. I can get that. Here's legally, the thing, right? though. Okay. For the most part, if you're going to replicate it, it might not go over so well with the Klingons. I'm However, try to do that. <laughs> what you will discover, um, if you want to make a roll for it, Martinez, yeah. there might be somebody here on the station who knows how to acquire Klingon blood wine. The Starbase real, the genuine article. One three eight. Okay. Huh. Which I know. You know. Yeah. I. I I'm think thinking so of as someone well. who might be, uh, who has been trained in how to foster good relations with other peoples. Yes. And possibly <laughs> good at trading. <laughs> <laughs> who possibly wants to get on some good, on the good side good of some, of some, some officers on the side. You must be ride. talking about some kind of ambassador, right? You know, the thought no. did occur. If only we knew one who wears on Starbase 138. Yeah, such a shame. Go, you want to go talk to the ambassador? Uh, yeah. I was yes, actually please. thinking okay. the Ferengi, but <laughs> he is in a brig. I was thinking the no, Ferengi. No, I am 100% the brig, thinking. Just chilling. He knows how to trade. He knows how to find mm, things. I can't of trust, Rel the Thirsty. Yeah, that's I can't true. trust the <laughs> particular Ferengi. Uh, Rel the Thirsty. That's true. The, the ambassador might actually have well, a little bit more, uh, that door more reason to both want ways, to please. It? The Sally ride. Well, uh, if I have a little bit of time, like you said, uh, you do. Commander Ruse in this meeting, mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to make requests on my data pad, and I'm learning what I'm learning about. Okay, we're going to go through this Klingon space, and there's going to be starts and stops and yep. searches, and and I'm going to go. All right, I want to try to get some of this blood wine. Okay. I'm going to try to go to this ambassador that we know. What's Lieutenant Commander Talon doing right now? What is she? Is she busy? Hello, me soup. This is before we're leaving Starbase 138. No. When, oh, yeah, this this is we? before you're leaving, yes, yes, but it's not like right before departure. Before we right. left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, actually, approaching the ambassador's office. Mm -hmm. um, oh, even better. Oh, even better. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You see. You, you see. You devil. Standing outside the door of the ambassador's office uh, is uh, the ambassador himself. Oh. Uh, and your science officer. Um, he is standing in the doorway. And it looks like they're having a conversation. Oh, perfect! As you approach, um, oh, you see them. They're having a moment. You see uh, <laughs> the ambassador is just kind of nodding, and he, goes, oh, captain. Hello, captain. Ambassador, lieutenant commander. It's good to see you again. I, I should have, <laughs> I should have stopped by to say hello. It's been a while. It's great to see you. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, not at all. No. Lieutenant commander, I'm not interrupting anything. No. We just had dinner and saying goodnight. If there's anything I can help you with before I call it a night. Yes, before you both uh, uh, give your goodbyes, uh, your goodnights, I just wanted to um, actually come by to see you, Ambassador L. You may oh. be able to help me with something. I just received um, orders for the Sally Ride. It seems that we're going to be heading through some Klingon space there to the Shackleton Expanse. It's going to yes. take about two months to head out there on a six-month mission total. But I was hoping that along the way... If there are going to be stops by the Klingons, certain checkpoints, that it wouldn't hurt if uh, the USS Sally Ride had some, some Klingon blood wine on board. And I'll be honest, I don't want to risk trying to replicate it. That's very clever. I don't think that clever. can go over very well. Yeah, it, you know, it just helps to have it on board. It's, no, it's a great idea, Captain. It's, it's, it's uh, served me well. So um, um, I was hoping that maybe you could help Lieutenant Commander Talon and I and the USS Sally Ride in obtaining some blood wine. Well, your instinct is right about it being replicated. In fact, if you were to offer Klingons replicated blood wine, particularly because you're human, it wouldn't go over particularly well. They might actually be offended. That's what um, I figured. I'm actually... Oh. There is one person I know who could procure it for you. Fantastic. Well, I think we're leaving in a, a day or so. Um, I think so. We've I mean, got some time. Knowing him, he might be able to. He might be able to do that for you. Okay, well, that'd be great. Um, if you wouldn't mind sending over that information, the contact info. I can tell you where he is now. Sure. He's on deck seven. All right. In the brig. I knew yeah. it. <laughs> this be our uh, for mutual Ferengi friend. Kalak. Okay. Friend, it's a strong word. All right. Well, I was hoping that. Uh, Honestly, I was hoping it was anybody else, but all right. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I can give you this pointer, though. Please. Given the recent relations between the Federation and Klingon Empire, Kalak's probably going to tell you that the price of blood wine has gone up, so just be prepared for that. All right. I and understand. everything else is going to be 
very Ferengi. <sighs> that makes sense. Well, to the Federation, money is no object, literally, so uh, <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> I'm looking forward to finding out how this encounter goes for you. Yeah. Great. And I'm looking forward to hearing about your dinner. I'm sure it was lovely. It was dinner. <laughs> I would call that a very accurate description. I've never thought of using the word dinner as an adjective, so that's... <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, thank you. You learn something new every day. All right, I'll leave you two to it. Good night. Good night. Good night, Captain. Good night, Captain. Good luck. Thank you. On my way to deck seven. Can... <laughs> Gonna get some blood <laughs> right now. Don't mind me. Uh, <laughs> uh, if that is I want to take out my frustration on Kala. <laughs> <laughs> um, as the captain leaves, uh, Rel just says, not a bad idea, Commander. <laughs> Deep space exploration. Yeah, Sounds like you're going to be gone for a while. Yes, it does appear to be so. <clears throat> You'll probably come back with an enormous amount of data. I can only imagine the Shackleton Expanse is largely unexplored. I've never been to the Shackleton Expanse. I've heard some reports about it, but I've only just recently taken an interest in science. <laughs> I mean, I've only, I, I don't typically study science. Mostly I, I like ships, as you know. <laughs> well, science ship. makes ships. Yes. Ships would not operate if science did not make them happen. You saved me. Thank you. Did I save you? Yes. From what? Making a fool of myself. <laughs> I'm, I continue to be surprised by your reaction to my presence. Why? What's, what's my reaction to your presence? I'm not sure if you are uneasy around me or if there is some deeper meaning be behind your unease. Ah. Well, I, I'll just say this, Commander, that if in the future there is time for a date, then I would be very, I'm sorry, I can't speak like a Vulcan. I apologize. I would love to go on a date with you. If I can be so blunt. I hope that doesn't offend your sensibilities. I know that you're probably more interested in people who speak with reserve, which I can completely understand. And I'm a Betazoid. I'm used to feeling everything from everyone all at once, all the time. You have both answered my question and also stated a purpose. I respect that. I'm, I'm told the reason why I make a decent ambassador is that I'm good at learning through my mistakes in the moment. I respect that as well. Thank you. Rel, you do not need to speak like a Vulcan with me. I have spent time around non-Vulcans for many years now. I can understand when you communicate me with me in whatever fashion is natural to you. I will take your invitation into consideration. I suppose I will have six months to consider your invitation. <laughs> well, I mean, don't meditate too hard on it. Uh, whether you accept or decline, the offer for dinner and discussions of ships is always open. Thank you. We'll have a, a fascinating journey into the Expanse, Commander. I really look forward to hearing about it when you return. I imagine I will have a fascinating time. And you have a fascinating time here, studying ships. I imagine that you will have much to tell me about science and ships when I return. Hopefully more than just the story about how I once procured a Federation captain a connection to Klingon blood wine. <laughs> that would be sufficient, too. Well, good night, Commander. Good night, Rel. 
he turns and shh, the door to the embassy closes. I turn away from the door and walk down the hall to take another one of my constitutionals around the starbase. <laughs> this is the Vulcan version of that scene from <laughs> 100 Days of Summer. <laughs> what I want you got. All right. I get you. Uh, can you imagine that scene in the notebook done by two Vulcans? <laughs> Why did you not write me? <laughs> I want to see every Robin. But I did Vulcans send you correspondence. Now. What do you want? Yes. Wait, I want to see What do you want? If you are a bird, then I am also a bird. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, so we will go ahead and cut to a captain of Starfleet walking into the brig area. Um, you see the chief security officer as you walk in immediately stands to his feet at attention. You know, I had a thought though. I had Why did you a moment that? of inspiration on the way. Okay. Um, that this meeting might go better if I waited for my XO. No. To be finished with their meeting with Admiral. Norwell Nash? Norwell. We Norwell. thought it was Norval, but it turns out it's Norwell. Norwell. Norwell Nash. The community was actually kind enough to correct me on that because I didn't know. I was not consistent. It was Norwell Nash. Norwell. 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 It's tough to. Norwell. Like a popcorn. Norwell you said so many times it doesn't mean anything anymore. Norwell. 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 So okay. I'd like to I'd like to wait. Um, and also just just a question. I, I know I said that it would would be leaving in a few days. I don't know exactly how pressing those orders were to start leaving for the Shackleton, but I imagine they give me those orders. Pretty soon. Six months mi mission. I have some time to get my things in order for to, you know for the Sally ride to get ready. Pretty soon. Okay. Like hours or, or like a few days or a week. I would say in probably the next twenty four hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. To to get underway. Um, so we'll. I mean, if you want, you can reach out and try to contact your commander. We can say that it's after the meeting, not not long after the meeting. Between meeting and mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. I would say that I'm the, the, the encounter that. the encounter with your commander and then going down to the brig is probably the same amount of time that conversation took place. These so, are all flashbacks. Yeah. 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 Instead of <laughs> signaling through a communicator, because that could just be rude sometimes. I know that Rue is in a meeting. Rude. I will do the future equivalent of shoot a text. Hey, when you're done, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> or computer location of command. New data pad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just head over to a little wide, like a wall panel. Okay. Click. Computer, give me the location of uh, Commander Rue, please. Commander Rue is on the observation deck. Mm, that means not in Admiral's. That's correct. Office. Okay, great. Um, doo -doo -doo. Martinez to Rue. Hi, Captain. Yeah. Commander, uh, I have um, received our new mission. Our uh, our our new heading. We're heading out to the Shackleton Expanse for about six months, which means we're going to be going through some uh, maybe not so friendly Klingon territory. I thought that it might be wise to have some some blood wine on board. I have just asked Ambassador Rell, our Betazoid friend, to try and help me put me in the right direction. He is sending me to our Ferengi friend, Kalak, who's in the brig. I was hoping if you had some time that you could maybe accompany me and we could uh, we could see what we would get. Would that be all right? Absolutely, okay. sir. I thought you might enjoy that too. Meet me at the break. Martina's out. Like there's two ways to work off steam. I can go down to the holodeck <laughs> and beat the hell out of some Klingons or I can go talk to Kalak. <laughs> yeah. um, False dichotomy. Uh, we're gonna say <laughs> you show up not too long after the communications. Mm -hmm. Um, you see your commander making their way down the hallway Great. towards you. Yeah, I'm just like waiting, the, waiting outside. Great. Approaching the brig, yeah, you see the doors to security are open. The security officer is standing at attention and has uh, a pad in their hand. Um, as you approach... Do I know the security officer? Mm -mm. No, doesn't look familiar. Do I know the security huh. officer? What's that? Do There's I a security, security officer I don't no, know. But that's not, a, that's not surprising. This is Starbase 138. 138 just went through a lot of personnel changes over mm -hmm. the past mm -hmm. couple of weeks cycling out people who were near exhaustion from trying to get this place up and running. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, no, the security officer is not familiar to you. Um, but he is a very large, I would say, football player-esque looking man. It looks like he's designed to be a wall. <laughs> it looks like that's what he was built for. Um, but as you all approach... He's about to be a door. He, as, as, you, as you all approach, he stands at attention to, for both of you. He says, Commander, Captain. 
Officer. We'd like a word with uh, your prisoner. Yes, Kalak, sir. If that'd be That's all right. the one, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. He immediately moves off, um, rounds the corner, comes back a few minutes later and says, He's awake, sir. You both can proceed into the back. Thank you. Commander, after you. Thank you, sir. Um, so you walk down a narrow corridor um, where you see a bunch of force fields and some very comfortable looking uh, quarters for mm. the prisoners until you come to the one at the end. Um, there are, I should tell you that every, every individual room here is empty. Yeah. Save for Kalak. <laughs> He's at the very back. Good. Um, probably the positioned back. there on purpose. And as you approach, He's rubbing his eyes as you walk, both of you walking up, and goes, Oh, I thought they were lying to me. Morning. Good. Is it morning? I don't know. <laughs> it's good to see you, Captain. You look well. Thank you. Appreciate that. You look uh, comfortable. The bed's not bad. Yeah, I didn't think so. How you doing, Clack? I'm terrified. Well, I did what I could. I put in uh, my report that you cooperated as best you could once we figured out what exactly was going on on our ship. So I hope that um, hope that they've been treating you fairly. Well, they've been treating me well enough. Good. It's the Federation, so I guess if I was going to be someone's prisoner, I lucked out here. Yeah, you could do much worse. Yes. Um, speaking of, <clears throat> you remember my commander? Oh, yes. Genial Hello, Blue. commander. <laughs> Hello. Your spots look nice today. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Very well. So, Clack, I'm going to cut to the chase. I need a favor. And if you do this for me, well, it certainly couldn't hurt the position you're in. He stands up. Yeah, there you go. And comes over to the force okay. field and says, How may I help you, Captain? My ship is heading through some, uh, some Klingon territory. And there is a possibility... You want blood wine, don't you? Yes, I use it quite often when I'm trying to bargain with the Klingons. It's the only way they'll tolerate a Ferengi going through their territory. I'm sure it's not the only way they'll tolerate you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, makes I don't follow that. It's a good start. All right. I would like to acquire some blood wine. The good stuff. None of that replicated crap. You know what I'm talking about. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, can you help us? Well... Captain, what I've learned about you is that you're a man who's good at bargaining, but you also like to... It's an earth phrase. Okay. Cut try, through... Try it out. Cut through the... Bullshit. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so... It's excrement from, uh, from one of our animals. Yes, um, a riding animal, I believe. Um, y so yeah. I... I, I I <laughs> was extinct, we brought it back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. So, instead of going back and forth the way we ultimately would do, mm -hmm. just how much is this going to award me when I help you? I know you're not going to be able to get me out. I have assumed that, but maybe commute some of the sentence? I didn't know I was holding a thought bomb, Captain. It was just I a know. pretty rock. I know that. Um, you, uh... I'll be, I'll be frank, Kalak. You seem like a pretty scummy guy, but yes. you don't seem evil. You're not all the way a dick, so... There are a lot of Ferengi out there that like to deal in certain ways. I know. And Here's what I'm going to tell you. I, I Honestly, I don't know what exactly it will do as of yet, but the sooner we get on your record that you were willing to help a Federation vessel, the same vessel that you helped before, and accidentally put in danger, but then helped that same vessel again. Uh, the sooner we get that on your record, the sooner I can find out, mm. can we reduce some of your sentence? Can we can we help Kalak in any way with what it is that he's dealing with? Again, I, I talked to my superior officers. They couldn't give me anything right now. Uh, it's also a little bit tricky because it's not something that is that can go on a lot of official Starfleet transcripts, if you know what I mean, that I'm trying to get blood wine to, right. does, it, does that make sense it so all again makes sense. what i can put on record is that you helped the ship that you previously put in danger uh, completely on your own it was your idea this was not something that you thought you would get anything in return for that sort of thing and the sooner we can get that on your record the better let's see if you can convince Kalak. all right 
I'll, I'll roll for some diplomacy, man. I got that. This is going to be a contested <clears throat> roll. Okay. Can I use one of my focuses? What's your focus? I have diplomacy, persuasion, composure, persuasion would interrogation. Oh, yeah. persuasion. persuasion would definitely apply. Oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, what am I rolling? Uh, I would say roll a presence plus command. Yeah. So this is going to be pretty good yeah. for you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Two successes. Oh. And if I'm using no, one you're, of my you're, you're focus, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, focuses, okay. that is a, uh, you go off of the discipline, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That is a, a critical hit, so three successes. Yeah. Three successes. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. Yep. This um, is the one thing I'm good at. <laughs> Is negotiating Hardly, negotiating yeah. for alcohol. Get out of my way, Scott. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I had a beer. Kalak, <laughs> Kalak just job. looks at you critically. And, you know, the thing about Kalak, and, and, and this is true for a lot of Ferengis, but specifically with Kalak, he, you, you guys have both gotten to know him pretty well. He's a weasel. And, but the thing is, is the moment you guys start wheeling and dealing, like most Ferengis, he gets that look in his eye of... You're in his house now. No, I can like, see this it in is his what lobes. he does. Are you kidding me? I can see it in his lobes. Look at that. They're, <laughs> but, they're basically on fire right now. Look it, at that. Well, I will say this, though. This is like foreplay for a Ferengi. A- after you, yeah. <laughs> after you, after you get done, after you get done with your pitch, essentially, yeah. he, he does take a little bit longer of a moment to consider what you've said. And just says, there's a lot of different rules of acquisitions that would demand I don't take anything you're saying as any form of reassurance. However, since I've come to know you, Captain, I know for a fact that you've followed through, and I will take your word as currency for now. I'd also like to remind you of rule of acquisition number 204. If you know you've got a good deal on the table, don't walk away from it. It may have been incorrectly translated, think, but something to that effect. Something to that effect. Right. I, I think, I, I appreciate the attempt, Captain. <laughs> it's a thought that counts. <laughs> you know, from a brig, sir, I'm not sure he's in a position to walk much of anywhere. That's true. You know... That's very true, Ruth. You did write that a fairly comprehensive report on his cooperative nature... I did. You read it, yeah. I, I hate to tell you, I did not quite make that the focus of my initial report. Hmm. But it's too bad. And you know what? It's Your reports have a lot of sway in Starfleet, Commander. A but, lot sir, of, I have not been deposed yet mm-hmm. on this matter. It's true. Interesting. What is your point, Commander? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you can't figure that out, you're not the Ferengi I think you are. I would be perfectly happy with that. (laughs) Judging by the way you treat and talk to me. That I treat a smuggler poorly. Mm. Yeah. There's other ways for us to get blood wine, Clack, so what's it gonna be? That is true. There are other ways. Why did you come to me? (laughs) Because, I'm trying to do you a solid. Oh, you're just doing this out of the kindness of your heart. I'm trying to get a good deal. You're letting your hand show, Captain. You and your commander. You were doing just fine a moment ago. Sure. No, I'll be honest. We were referred to you. You're not my first choice, but you're here on Starbase. Who was your first choice? I can't say. Mm-hmm. I happen to know a Klingon or two. Mm-hmm. I, I know I do, really. Do you want to roll to try to deceive him? No, it's not I mean, false. Yeah, Remember sure, no. the intelligence officer? Yeah. You, we actually know Klingons. Yeah. Uh, yes, but you're inferring that you can contact this intelligence officer to get blood wine. Yes. So are you trying to That's deceive him now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you like to roll to deceive him? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> is that another persuasion? Uh, yes, this is cool. going to be another persuasion check. All right. Um, I'm going to drop some threat here to raise the difficulty by one. Presence, presence command? Um, or not not the difficulty. I'm going to I'm gonna drop some threat here to give him an extra die. Did you die. get any momentum from that last roll? Uh, oh, that's right. What was the we difficulty? Don't know. What was the difficulty? Uh, what, what was his roll? Oh, it was contested. Yeah, yeah. it was a contested oh, okay. roll. There wasn't a difficulty. Okay. But if we beat him, then we should have gotten yeah. momentum, right? You would have gotten one momentum from the last right. roll. Sweet. Good to know. Yeah. I, I think Thank that you might for be bringing worth that up. a spend. Mm-hmm. Is this also a contested roll? Another contested yes, it is. If and I, I did... If, I, I burned threat, by the way, to purchase an extra die. If we so, spend this momentum, mm-hmm. can I get a third mm-hmm. yes, die? Yes, you may. Yeah. Great. Um, have I gotten assist, uh, uh, an ability to assist him from this? I'll let you assist here. Thank you me. are kind of doing good cop, bad cop right now, so I'll let you do it. Exactly sure. what that is. Go ahead. Quite so. 
All right. So it Good is. Good security officer, bad security officer. <laughs> presence command. Yep. Presence command. And I'm using my persuasion focus. I assume I'm also doing presence command. Um, do I get to use my intimidation focus on this one? If that's what you're trying to do. Always. Then yes. All right. Hmm. Success. How much you get? What'd you get? Two successes. And that's uh, an extra one for me. So three. Okay. <laughs> um, first of all, do, first of all, do we get any momentum from that one? <laughs> uh, you table. guys are gonna get two momentum from that roll. Oh. Because I rolled a, I rolled poorly. Yep. Oh. Um, <laughs> you sorry, rolled. Relax. You're going to be not sorry, Black. <laughs> well, he is kind of sorry. Yeah. Although I'll need to actually I'll need to refer to the rules because I'm not 100 percent sure you gain momentum from uh, contested rolls. Internet? From contested rolls. I thought I had from when I was uh, beating Klingons up with crutches back in uh, playtest. Yeah, but that was because there's a difficulty rating attached to combat. So there's a, uh, not in melee. Mm-hmm. There's a flat oh, yeah, difficulty, difficulty of one. one. Yeah. And in this case, oh, it was um, just this a is a yeah, difficulty one contested roll. I think is what it, is. it would have to be. I think a difficulty one contested roll. So yeah. let's let's go with that assumption for now. Moving yeah. forward, so we don't have to We've got some of our best people working. But I think that makes sense. Right. I'll have to double check it. I'm sure Nathan Dowd will jump in on this, but um, uh, I'm almost certain that all contested rolls, unless otherwise stated, have a difficulty of one as a flat base. Mm -hmm. And everybody, are you looking it up? Yeah. No, that just sounds really familiar. Yeah. Um, sort of. But default. I am also looking it up. Yeah. There's um, a diplomacy section and stuff. Mm -hmm. There are rules associated with that that we generally have not used. Mm. Uh, right. But yeah. Okay. Your GM. So what exactly? So you say. You've said we, we know a Klingon. Yes. What are you doing to intimidate Rue as you say this? I mean, I Give generally me. have been up to this point. Um, yeah. But other than that, I think it's mostly Rue stare. So you're mostly like leaning in, posturing, and using what you've already said to him. Just yeah. Sort of like, okay. I'm using literal presence. He stares and he doesn't make eye contact with Commander Rue, and he just kind of says, are you familiar with rule acquisition of 66? Enlighten me. No. <laughs> I'll get you your blood wine. Just write something nice about me. Aww. Consider it done. At a fair price. Well. I'll know. I don't have any say over the price. Well, do what you can. I can direct you to someone who's fair to me. Yeah, do what you can. Work with what you got. I'll give you a name and where you can find him. Okay. You're lucky he's on this station. Great. You're Goes lucky over. he's on this station. <laughs> Jesus. Clack just kind of like lowers his head and just presses a few buttons um, and says, I've had the information. It's stored here in the computer. You can access it wherever you want to know. Thank you. Good doing business with you. Yes, I'm sure it was. Mm -hmm. All right, enjoy the rest of your stay, Kalak. He just saunters back over to his bed and sits down oh. in slumps. Hopefully the next time we meet, it will be under good conditions. Oh. Have a nice night. Mm. Okay, I'll take that as a you too, Captain Commander. Uh. <sighs> okay, you guys leave. Um, Sally Ride, uh, it's easy. Clack basically opened up his the computer that he has access to, which mm -hmm. is like, it's basically, he's allowed to like make journal entries and whatnot. It's real basic mm -hmm. computer access inside. It has no um, connection outside of the brig. You're able to access it from the security console up front. Um, and you just, you, he's you basically entered a name. Okay. Uh, someone who calls themselves Roland, in quotes. Cut. Roland. What do we yes. know about wow. Roland? I'm writing that down. Where is he? <laughs> what species is he? Uh, he's Saurian. And apparently he is a wine merchant, so to speak. And he makes a lot of runs, and he usually stays here on the station for extended periods of time, according to Kalak. Okay, so we'll go talk to him as soon as we can. All right, so All right, why don't we do this to expedite? Mm -hmm. You're going to meet up with a sorry named Roland. Mm -hmm. um, that, of course, is not his real name. Mm -hmm. His skin is a vibrant purple, and he has bright yellow eyes and that narrow features. Um, he's actually quite pleasant and 
gentle and uh, gentile, I should say. I'm very. It's uh, not Jewish. Gentile? What's that? What? Gentile. 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 Did I say Gentile? <laughs> I did say Gentile. He probably is not Jewish. Yeah. I don't know, but like, yeah, hey. I think it's safe to assume. Is it Jewish, sorry? I am down for this. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, you know. Shalom. Have some I, I got in touch with Earth culture. I found some parts of it that I loved, and I just went with That's it. That's great. Yep. That's great. Um, oh, but you can't cosh your blood wine. It's just like. Yeah. By its nature. Yeah. By its I, I, look, I went to a bar mitzvah and that was it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. Um, so uh, essentially, uh, to, to we'll just base this off your roles with Kalak. Um, he is able to set you up with one cask of blood wine. But only one. He's only got one. And it is how, going how to. How much is a cask? What, we, what is that? It's going to cost you a penny or two. Okay. How um, big is it? Not, how many? What's that? I think, were you talking like how about big is it? price or volume? Size. Volume. volume. Um, volume, I would, well, let me revise. I'll say mm -hmm. it, it's, he's got you a barrel. We'll, we'll revise it. Okay. He's got you one barrel of blood wine. Okay. Um, the barrel, at right now, it's all he has, and he's not willing to sell any of it for less than the entire amount. He doesn't want to just give away a little bit. Plus, if you open it, the vintage, he feels, will be damaged. Yeah. So, um, he's only willing to sell it for one full bar of gold press lap. Okay. Which... Ooh is freakishly expensive, but doable. Okay. Um, this might have something to do with uh, the price gouging that's taking place about the Klingon, uh, but it's not, it's easy to basically requisition, um, put in a request for Federation credits in order to receive one of these gold, one yeah. of these bar. One bar is not gonna be too much of a, of a request. As a captain, you have certain privileges and you're able to access this, although people do ask why. <laughs> Um, to expedite this even further, because you only have 24 hours and we need to jump in, I will say that Captain Martinez discovers that um, it's actually surprisingly easy to get this gold press latinum that you need for this purchase, because once it's described why you need it, the Federation Embassy goes, ah, oh, yes. Gotcha. Okay, great. So that is a good idea, Captain. I, I, no, here's yeah, the yeah, bar. Yeah. Take mm -hmm. it and go. Great. All right. Well, thanks to some fancy talking, you managed to finagle Kalak into giving you a name and procure yourself a barrel of blood wine. Here's what you I worry about. You said, you said it couldn't be, if it's opened, then that's the vintage. If it's open, we'll it's about... like opening a bottle of wine. The once it's open, you've only got a little bit of time before it starts to go bad. My concern is that we got a barrel. Mm -hmm. We get stopped and I give that away as a gift or it gets Use confiscated. Use it wisely. That's, that's one. We have that's a, a fine ass science crew. We'll see about <laughs> preservation as a separate issue. Because <laughs> I'd love to just like, literally every time we get, I don't know how many times we're getting stopped, but it's like, I would love to give a bottle to that to that checkpoint. We'll you know what I mean? We'll also see what we could pick up within you know, Klingon territory if you're you could about try you you could try to bottle. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like There's no reason why you, yeah. you could attempt to bottle um, all the bottle. all the blood wine in the barrel. This is the most advanced science. Yeah. <laughs> if we can get bottle wine, we get in trouble. The Come basically on. the I just advanced, want to point out that dying this is also this is also the same future where Riker got his ass kicked by Data's cat. So I'm just saying. That's true. Like even though we are living happened. in the future, I made hey, sure that's that the, cat. I, I made sure that the USS Ellie Wright is is half cat people, half dog people. <laughs> in case anything like that comes up, it's fine. <laughs> I'm trying. A third targ people, like we're set. We're fine. All right. Welcome to the USS Sally Red Vineyard. <laughs> um, so yeah, then the we are going to. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of this. We're going to go ahead and flash ride. forward then to the departure of the Sally Ride, which is technically where our episode left off. So now that we're done with our sort of. Lose a momentum? What's that? Lose a, uh, yeah, lose one momentum. We're going to cut to the next scene. So the Sally Ride has jumped to warp, headed for the Shackleton Expanse. Um, at warp, uh, at warp seven. It is, as I said, going to take you approximately two months, one week, and two days to reach uh, Narendra Station, or Starbase 364, as it's known throughout the Federation. It's just called Narendra Station for short. Wouldn't mind taking it. Two months, um, one week, and three days. Two days. Two, days. two, days. two months. Two months, one, two one week. One week, two days. Two days. Three, Starbase 364? Long Starbase time. 364, also known as Narendra Station. Thank you. It's on the borders of the Shackleton Expanse. It's not the only Starbase in the border, but it's the one you all are being stationed Narendra to. Three station. Um, when you, I would say about six hours into travel towards Narendra Station as duty shifts are coming to an end, Captain, as you are making your way to your quarters, um, you hear, shift to Captain. Martinez here. Captain, the chief and I just Found we found some. something! You hear that in the background. 
Uh, where did you find this, Jeff? Jeffrey's Tube 11. You need me to meet you there? Well, I could actually send you an image on your personal computer, sir. You don't have to come crawling in the Jeffrey's Tube. Sure, go ahead. Do that. All right, stand by. Thank you. You make your way over to your desk and swivel around the data pad that's mounted. And as you look down, you see the image come up. And it's the inside panel that's been pulled away inside of a Jeffrey's tube. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, for better, for all intents and purposes, it's a live stream. Um, and you see Jiv positions, and he says, are you seeing this? And he's pointing. And you see the, 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 neural, the, the bile neural gel pack. And it, you're not seeing what he's pointing at until he gets the, image, the imaging scanner closer. What am I looking at, Jiv? Look real close, Captain. There's a color in there that doesn't belong. Doesn't look like an L car. And as he leans in close, you see green. And it takes you a moment to realize that's that that's a leaf. That's a leaf. It's growing outside the bioneural pack, Captain. How is there a plant growing in our bioneural pack? I'm not sure, sir. I've scanned the environmental systems. It appears that at some point in the past 48 to 72 hours, some kind of pollen entered the environmental, the entire, look, I don't want to boggle your mind with tech speak, Captain. He turns the thing to you. Essentially, whatever this is should not have been able to survive going through the, by the environmental filters. And uh, it did, and there it is. Whatever it is, it's latched onto the side of our ship. It's not big, it's only a sprouting. But uh, that shouldn't be possible. And he angles it back. Is it in danger of um, damaging any of our systems? Honestly, I don't know. Okay. Can you run some kind of test? Are you planning to remove it? That was my plan, but I'd, uh, I thought I should show you first. I don't know what kind of damage it could do to the ship sitting where it is. Yeah. But the chief here actually has a bit of a background in this sort of thing. That's great. Chief Wren? Mm-hmm. Turns out she was a bit of a gardener, I suppose. Is that right? Gardener? My mother. Her mother was okay. a gardener. All right. I'll, uh, I'll defer to her expertise, but I wouldn't, wouldn't mind getting a doctor to take a look at it. Shashiros. I have a feeling that she's going to want to take a look at this. Well, I could contact a doctor and keep you posted. See if she's still up. Yeah, I think she's she's going to want to wake up for this. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Hi, right, Captain. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. Keep me posted. Thank you. Shiv out. Shiv turns to you, still laying on his back, and he just looks at you and he goes, The mind thing where everyone's memories were starting to get all wishy-washy and we were all having flashbacks, that was weird. But this, <laughs> this is definitely weird. I guess I better wake up the... Doctor. Tell me. Jiv de Shasiros. Tell me where we are in time compared to Rue checking into sick bay. Before or after? Rue has just walked in the door and said, I need a neural scan. And Matazi has gone completely quiet. And as you're about, you've just said, come in and have a seat on one of the tables. Um, that's when you get Jiv de Shasiros. Shasiros here. Doctor, I got something down here in the Jeffrey's tube that's, uh... I'm still trying to find a way to break it to people, you know? I told the captain about it, and he seemed pretty befuddled. Uh, is it a medical emergency? Not merely a medical emergency, so much as a biological curiosity that shouldn't exist. That sounds lovely. Uh, Nurse Matazi, would you go check out... Uh, sorry, Jiv, we've got some business in sickbay, but, uh, Nurse Matazi's on his way. Uh, all right. I'll wait for him. Jiv out. Matazi just nods and glances again at Rue and says, Doctor, I'll be back. And walks out. Tell me what the thing is. Yes, Doctor. <sighs> Commander Rue. At this hour, it's just you two in sickbay. There's a nurse staff that's on hand, but right now, it's the sickbay's empty. Have a seat. What brings you here? I saw something. Uh, 
person in the mirror. I thought it might be a hallucination, but it wasn't a memory like that thought bomb. I... I was worried. Thank you for coming in. Uh Uh-huh. I'm going to... If it's all right, I'm going to run some scans. Please. Can you describe what you saw? Um, I looked in the mirror and I saw not me. I saw a man. Uh, I, I think he was Trill. I'm not sure. He was dressed in black. He had these eyes. Someone known to you? No. I mean, I know that there are some cases with joined trill where this sort of thing happens, but it (laughs) it couldn't happen to me. So I wanted to rule out other options. Uh, Doctor, just so you know, because you would have had you have Rue's medical file, so you would know what they're talking about. But Rue's a joint trill, but Rue is a first-time host. And this is the, f- uh, and same with the symbiont. It's the first time the symbiont and a host have joined. So there are no previous lives. Right. I mean, it's not unheard of for there to be rep- repressed memories in a symbiont, but happened to me. And so I was worried that maybe it wasn't that sort of thing. That it was something else. Well, we're gonna find out. You are the first Trill I've had the honor of working with, so I'm gonna try to run through the standards. I'm gonna check your isoboramine levels. Uh, Doctor. If we could check nanite quiescence as well, just in case. Of course. Any idea you have, anything you feel that you think I should know, we're in this together. Yes, doctor. Run your scan, doctor. Sally Wright is going to assist you here. Yeah, that was, I, ideally bay. that was small talk while I did the basic scans. Sure thing. So you're going to make a reason sci- uh, medicine roll, and Sally Wright is going to help with her computers. Computers medicine? What's that? Computers medicine? That's correct. She has medicine, right? She does. Medicine, but yeah. Computers okay. medicine. Put all my sheets. I need to get that. There she it's is. There she is. What is the difficulty? Uh, so the difficulty here is going to be three. It's a little on the tricky side. Mm. Hey, cautious. What up? Yes. Thank I you. It's difficult um, this for is, most doctors. This is kind of a new scene. Nice. Are we going to oh, yeah. pop the momentum out for that? No, I'll let you keep it. I'm going to okay. keep I'm treating this all as the same scene. Cool. This is before the next commercial break, so. <laughs> Got it. Right. All right. Yeah. It's the commercial break roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's kind of how I gauge the scenes. Unless we're doing a dramatic shift in scenery. Like right, if it's yeah. cut to the planet, Shortcut, then it yeah. would be different. But. Okay. All right. You said reason medicine for me. That's correct. Cool. And you get an assist. The difficulty is three. Go ahead and make your roll. Got this. Focuses? Yeah. Her focus is almost always applied when she's running medicine on aliens or people Did we get one? biology. Four. Whoa. Okay. Got a double. I'm going to. Sp- that would be five. I'm- That's one for me. Reroll. Uh, not not four successes. Uh, yeah. Two successes, but I am going to oh. use a reroll. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to succeed because Sally Ride got you one t- anyway. Okay. So, let's so you, can, you can Run go the for the score. momentum. Yeah. That was a success, though, right? Reason medicine? I did bad math. <laughs> Don't re-roll the success. Yay, Bonnie. Uh, thank you. Saved the- I was Bonnie. like, what are you I'm doing? Good to have Why is- <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, never mind. Four That's okay, I, I said Gentile, so you, you can have bad math. So Monday. Um, um, who knew? I know, that's the, the trade-off to moving to Monday nights, is now y'all get to watch us on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get Wait. two momentum. Okay, so I got four, and the ship so, got one. Yep, so that's five. So five you're gonna succeed. Three. Difficulty three. Um, thank you. I got you. I was like, what are you so doing? Can I let's, let's roll? Let's, I should have asked you this before you roll, but let's get specific on what the initial roll, what are you scanning for? 
The first scan, because hallucinations are the initial suggestion, is is uh, going to be a combo of like basic life signs mm -hmm. uh, and then neural activity. So you're just looking for anything anomal an that has sort of an anomaly inside of her, um, inside of the system of the trill itself. Starting well, starting with sort of the like, start with the broadest checks, uh -huh. um, but drill pretty quickly in on essentially mental status and uh, like specific trill physiology things like isobarmine levels. Um, okay, so you're gonna use all you got to scan their body and sort of, okay. So yeah, you're we'll get that studious any, going if we need to get some, uh, obtain information. So as you're running, what you're detecting from Commander Rue right now is they are um, elevated blood pressure, slightly elevated heart rate, um, obvious signs of stress and anxiety. Um, nothing, oh, and then acquiescence. What's that? Sorry, do I need to do a separate scan for that? For what? Uh, Nanite, Nanite uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do one or the other. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I'm gonna start you... with the broad and mental one yeah. and then follow it up with yeah, the yeah, other Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the successes that you rolled, you're gonna get an answer to that, to that, the inquiry. Um, what you're detecting is there's nothing seemingly anomal an, an, anomalous about the scan. Nothing is really standing out aside from a change in physiology. It's clear that Rue is going through a period of anxiety right now. Um, not surprising considering the amount of confusion that they're displaying to you. Uh, but for the most part, their body seems to be functioning just fine. You do, once again, running that tricorder over their body, the, the amount of scar tissue under the surface is extraordinary. Um, and the amount of healing that this body has gone through is extraordinary. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. the amount of strength that's also held in the body that's underneath the scar tissue, in other words, for all intents and purposes, Rue's in perfect health from this scan, aside from everything else. Yep. Huh. I also see the, the marks of, as I always do when I'm examining you, of, of the many folks who have attended you before and I'm reminded, of course, that some of it went well and some of it is the reason you are reluctant to walk through these doors. Mm -hmm. yeah. So were you, was anybody, so that was just, you weren't gonna, were you gonna burn the momentum to ask anything further? Because you wanted to know about the nanites, right? Because for that, you'll need to burn. But I think you get a, uh, you have a trait that doesn't, doesn't it Obtain basically. Do we I want didn't take studious. Oh, I'm oh, okay. cautious and I have a couple oh, others. But okay. Talana's studious. Sorry. Yeah. Talana studious. Well, yes. so we could get one on an obtained information. Yeah, if you want to burn one, one momentum, I'll give you more information. Okay. And we could always do a separate roll with a cautious with the other momentum and yeah. pop sure. it back up if we wanted. Okay, so burn that momentum. Um, you one. continue to run the scan. Um, Commander Rue's body exhibits signs of someone who was probably point blank range when some kind of ionized blast exploded close by. You're detecting uh, cellular damage and, neuro and damage to the nerve endings throughout the body. Um, it has healed quite remarkably. Um, but it's becoming, once again, a, a quick reminder that the commander is ev living every single day with a body that was shattered and put back together and has been forged since. Um, deeper into that scan, you're detecting the, the, the undeniable traces, minor traces of Borg nanites. Um, they're there. The, tra the amounts are so minuscule, however, and they're not functioning. They're de you, you detect them, but they're so few, in other words, it would be impossible to extract them without causing serious damage. Um, they do not seem to be active, emitting any kind of activity whatsoever. They are, for all intents and purposes, they're dead or dormant. As usual. Yes. Yeah. In fact, probably because of the amount of repair that Rue has un undergone, Rue is actually showing less of a presence of Borg nanites for someone who is partially assimilated than most people have in their files uh, of people who have been partially assimilated. For example, Jean-Luc Picard probably still has some pretty obvious trace amounts of Borg nanites in their system. Uh, Rue has oh, yeah. significantly less, probably again, because at some, at some point in Rue's life, going through the amount of surgery and repair that they went through, it's entirely possible that Rue's entire circulatory system has been run through a filter and reinserted into their body to help get rid of those nanites. And it probably happened more than a few times during the repair process. Um, after, scan, after this deep scan for about 20 minutes of running this test and Rue sitting there, once again, 
on a doctor's bed being scanned again and again. You can count days of your life if you add the hours together how many times you have to sit in front of a doctor's scan. Um, when the scan stops, you, you, you've gotten good enough that you can actually understand what the readouts are telling you for on, the, on the wall. If I had been looking, I've, I've, I'm starting to dissociate out by now just as sort of a survival mechanism. Okay. Um, you notice Rue is just point. looking ahead, not really engaging or noticing. But Doctor, when you're done scanning, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong. Medically, there is nothing wrong with Rue. Commander Rue, let's start with the good news. Nothing that we feared is showing up on the scans. There's a lot we can rule out. You're interrupted by Matazi. Doctor? Nurse? Uh, doctor, I'm here in the Jeffreys tube and I'm staring at something. Are you near a computer console at the moment? Of course. Turn your attention to the computer console immediately. <laughs> You're going to need to see this. Oh, please excuse me. <laughs> accessing the accessing the sick bay computer view screen. Stand by. I'm over her shoulder. Yeah, my you turn and both of you are looking, and you see coming up on you see uh, the chief's face, big smiling face, <laughs> nodding, kind of like, is this on? And then, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hi, chief. <laughs> Doctor, um, hello. Uh, by the way, we're doing fine, but um, we got some stuff that I think you might be interested in. Um, at that point, it pans over, and it's the same experience. You don't know what you're you don't know what you're looking at, but you hear Shiv go, "Damn it! I need to get closer." Hold on. It's cramped. There's three of us in here. Matazi, you're seven feet tall. For, for, <laughs> and then you see it gets closer, and as you're just kind of like, it registers. You know what you're looking at immediately. You see it. And you hear Shiv go, I don't know what this is, Doctor, but... It's a leaf, Shiv. It's a leaf. It's a leaf, and it should not have survived. It got through the environmental system, and it's planted itself right here in this bioneural pack. I don't know what that is going to mean. And I don't know how to extract it or where it came from. Right. Uh, we need to inform the captain? He knows. He told me to tell you. Ah. Get your, he told me to get your opinion on it. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so, this unexplained... <laughs> is that Rue's reaction when you see this? <laughs> it is... Uh, Chief Medical Officer's log. Uh, an <laughs> unknown life form has been discovered on the ship. It appears to have traveled while bypassing our environmental guidelines. Shiv leans over to you and goes, Is she doing a log right now? Uh, uh, yeah. Think so? I just, I just want to write it down. Oh, can you hear us? I'm oh. sorry, we're in your log. You're supposed to mute it. <laughs> uh, it is slightly distressing that it has gotten past our environmental controls, but uh, keep an eye on it. When I'm done with our immediate business, I'm gonna come take a look. Right? Oh, no problem. Got on it. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. I hope she was talking to me. She was. I don't want to okay. stay in here. Keep an eye on it. And Shiv gets up and goes, Matazi, would you move? <sighs> Why are you Cation so big anyway? And then he starts, Matazi kind of crab walks backwards looking at this thing as both Shiv and Matazi move out of the Jeffrey's tube towards the ladder. <laughs> um, and you and just... lay on your back staring at this biological wonder. Oh no, I, I, I've commenced speaking to it to okay. give it oxygen or <laughs> light and comfort and good feelings. Are, are you having Ghostbusters 2 flashbacks while we sing to it and say kind and nurturing things to it? Yeah. <laughs> Your <Anyway>. love. It <laughs> likes music. Put some music at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, My mother used to sing lullabies to the plants. So, what do, so to wrap up the scene in sickbay, what is what are you two doing? Uh, first of all, I'm checking... Uh, Commander Rue, do you have any response once I click off that phone call? Mm. I've gotten in through the transport. It infiltrated from the bioneural gel pack. That is 
the most sensible way that it could have circumvented the environmental controls. Do you want to hypothesize? Does anybody want to try to figure that out? We can. I, At a later date with contributions from our scientists. I'm spitballing. That is not a formal scientific <laughs> method. <laughs> nope. Who's like, I know how to ambush people. I do not know how plants grow on bioneural packs. <laughs> I do not do the science. <laughs> I am token jock. Is Rue aware of them? Were you, because you were, I think, on the station when they, when they Are came. Are you asking they, what Rue knows out of character? Yeah. Uh, so Rue was, so just to, a quick yeah. refresher, Rue was actually allowed to stay in the room to know exactly yeah. what it was they were involved, what yes. you guys were involved in? Yes. I know pretty, I pretty much have all of the relevant information. Rue knows the implications of that. Let's put it that way. That was why my first reaction yeah. was shit. Hmm. Mm. They, they, full, they are okay. fully aware of what that means. I'm trying to figure out what the doctor knows Rue knows. Uh, a good news wrapped in a pile of trouble. I'll take the good news. Speaking of which, I, I'm glad everything is checked out, but uh, would you mind writing down what it was that you saw so that if there's any further episodes, we can compare details? Yes, Doctor. And Am I to assume then that this was psychological in nature? I can't say I was under any un undue stress. Any other precipitating incident I could think of. There's some explanation. Right now, it seems most likely that this may have something to do with your symbiont's unique physiology. So I don't think there's any reason to keep you from going about your duties unless you would prefer to rest. No. I mean, I think we have things to do that are important. It is a pile of trouble. But it is good news. But it's a pile of trouble. I know, we'll work on the environmental controls. Starfleet had some reason to believe that this was dangerous. And generally, we're here because we're inclined to give them the benefit of the doubt, especially when they know things that we don't know. And it's your job to keep us safe, just like it's my job to keep you safe. Both of our jobs are protecting, saving the lives of this crew, and they already have one danger on this ship that they didn't sign up for. I'm glad that the nanites in me are quiescent, but... They don't have a danger. They have a good idea wrapped in trouble for other people. For now. But... Scares like this do remind us, and if this really is the Genesis life form, that's two piles of trouble. Do you want to go see it? For security reasons? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Thrello. Thank you for coming to sickbay. Please keep me informed and let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. I will. Commander. I protect this crew. Even from me. Come on, keep up. Slow down. <laughs> um, Fun fact: that is certainly the first time I've used your first name. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, hopping down off the med bay uh, bed. Um, It's like the crutch is hitting the ground's like two shotguns, just and then Rue is out the door very What's quickly. What's a shotgun? It's, I, it's a, uh, never mind. And I will explain in detail. <laughs> so you uh, move out move out the door and you guys are headed down to the Jeffries tube. 
I'm going extra fast to burn off nervous energy. Okay. <laughs> I was not able to move for like 20 minutes and I was in a sick bay. We right. are moving, right. we are gonna. You, I really hope um, you keep up. That would I'm be I'm trying. <laughs> All right, so late at night, um, you're headed down to engineering section. Uh, you guys are sustaining warp seven, headed towards uh, Klingon space right now. Um, it is probably going to be another few days before you actually reach the Klingon uh, neutral zone. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you've still got that. some time. What's that? We're going to have a meeting about that before we hit the Yeah, you're going to have to. <laughs> um, I have. Um, now, the Klingon, the Klingon Empire knows that y'all are going to be using the corridor. Because mm -hmm. there's no way they'd send you through without flagging it. Um, so far as you know, you have been given uh, access or permission to, to use the corridor. Uh, they're honoring that part of the agreement. Um, you also... Uh, I will tell you that Nash has probably also told you in, in the past that one of the reasons why this is all right to do is because the Klingons simply don't care right now. They're a little more interested. They, they know about the scientific charter. They're just going to keep an eye out to make sure it's a Starfleet science vessel. Yeah, we're a science intrepid They don't class. care. They're in the middle of waging war on Cardassi, <laughs> even though they do feel offended by the Federation, which is why he's told you to keep your guard up going through. It might be one of those let one in, close the door behind them kind of deal. So uh, anyway... As you're sitting down, uh, going over crew reports, Captain, um, and we'll get to you pretty soon here, Talon, um, but as you're sitting down going over crew rosters, um, just before you go to bed, sort of like your nightly ritual, to make sure that duty assignments are all being adhered to, you're basically checking with the supervisors and all the senior officers on board. Um, something gets flagged, brought up. Um, there's a denial for transfer on this data pad. Sorry, a denial for transfer? A denial for transfer. Apparently, somebody requested transfer off of the Sally ride without asking your permission or even requesting it from you directly. And so who denied it? I denied it? Somebody else denied it? No, it was denied by Starfleet. Mm. Um, who, was the, who was the transfer? The name says Ensign Lark Sage requested a transfer off the USS Sally ride on Starbase... Uh, one, oh, when one, we six, were just at 138? 138. Why is everyone looking at me? Apparently, uh, shortly after you received mission orders and announced them to the crew, uh, Lark immediately contacted, you're guessing used their connections, their parents' connections, uh, being high-level ambassadors for the United Federation to try to basically hop ship. It was uh, declined only on the basis that there was not enough time to process the transfer request. And it was not deemed an emergency. It was not deemed an emergency. This is really troubling. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should. This is this is after main shift, so we're off duty right now. Uh, yes. For all intents and purposes, if your work shift start, stopped at eight p.m. Mm -hmm. and people usually went to bed around ten, you're at like ten thirty, ten forty. Got it. Yeah. Think of it like um, that. Shift. Okay, so we're in beta shift. I'm going to uh, bring this up before Alpha Shift starts next morning. The okay. next morning. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to send a message to um, to, to Ensign Sage. Actually, no, I'm going to hold off on that. I need to discuss this with my XO. Ah, and I'm going to okay. talk about it with him tomorrow. So this is just really troubling. I'm also looking at this list of everybody's favorite films. And they're all Earth films from before no. the year, like, 2000. Check the Bajoran. There's a Bajoran film there. Really? Which yeah. one? Where, where is it? Um, is there's it Tron? Uh, Voice of the Prophets right there. Oh, I love Voice of the Prophets. <laughs> I love cool. this. That's I love it so one. much, That's a great yeah. historical film. Good. That's so we cool. have, like, a real good start. I'm real proud of y'all off Tron, What is Tron Forged by Blizzard? I'm not familiar. Is that an Earth film? Just or is that uh, somewhere else? Just Tron Force? Check through. No. Uh, just like follow that, down the is lines. That, that, is that, I'm assuming that's Andorian? Shran. It must Forged be. Forged by Blizzard. No, it yeah, sounds Andorian. Andorian. It's Andorian. I mean, it's good. I, I love I, that movie! It's great, yeah. I have yeah. heard of that film. My parents wouldn't let me watch Voice of the Starfleet. Prophets. They yeah. I cannot stay of, still long enough to sit through movies. My film oh, education list. is not robust. Is really oh, that's dark. <laughs> it's like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Star Wars episode Your human five parents wouldn't let you watch a Bajoran movie. They wouldn't movie. let me watch the voices. I, I'm telling you, man, this, the sages did not want me seeing anything Bajoran. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> they did There's, not let me watch mm. Voice of the Prophets. It was on, and it was on like the required like list of voices. They played it all the time in school. Don't they played all the time. I remember yes. at one point, it might have been in the pregames, we talked about there is a movie night on this ship. Yeah. yeah that is the thing that we have. Can we watch still, Voice of the Prophets? The thing that's still a little bit troubling is that I'm still seeing a lot of 
pre-VR, pre-3D, early 21st yeah. century film. I'm like, come on. With the, I know we've got a lot of history hey, buffs hey, on board. Look, there are a lot of blank spaces. Uh, history buffs. But also, right. they're trying to curry favor with their captain. Oh. Well, we'll you've managed, yeah. we've managed, crew, we've managed we to take you. our segue talk <laughs> And th- which yeah. is going to take us right into our break. Good, great. Yeah. <laughs> great. It's our captain's going to talk to the EXO. Yeah. Yeah. Break. So, yeah, so we're at 8.30 now, so we're going to take a quick 10-minute break. We'll Sean, get back. my blizzard! We're going to yes. find out We're going to find out what's going on in Jeffrey's tube. We're going to find out what the captain's got to say to Lark, and we're going to find out what's happening at the Klingon Neutral Zone coming up. So stay tuned, and we're about to have our giveaway, our Star Trek giveaway, our Star Trek Online giveaway codes for the Temporal Agent Pack. So stay tuned and active in Alpha and Twitch chat, and we will see you in 10 minutes. Okay, welcome back to Shield of Tomorrow. We're back from our break. Um, real quick, Shield of Tomorrow stats is reporting one Fantastics, two Snort Laughs. Uh, let's see, one rolls, three crits, two pencils have broken. Oh, wait, two plus pencils have broken. There have been two crits, three rolls. Oh, I see, one Snort Laugh. Oh, I'm, I've been reading this wrong. You know what? I'm just going to go back to DMing because that's what I do. I'm going to GM tonight because I can't. Anyway. I haven't heard them. We've but already no. had some math problems. It's okay. It's, ma- it's yeah, Monday, guys. Are hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do have this for you guys. Uh, we have a winner. Uh, Rip Artists just got oh. themselves a Temporal Agent pack. Yay. We're staying active in chat. So congratulations, congratulations and enjoy that pack and uh, make sure to open that baby up because uh, when we do our play along, it's going to be pretty handy to have. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and jump back into our episode. Uh, when we last left off, <laughs> we were talking about nothing. <clears throat> and then we were going to jump to 8 o'clock in the morning, I believe, right before the meeting. When does sh- the shift start? When does alpha shift start? So the alpha ships. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah, it's going to oh, be... No, it's gonna be a night's rest. The next morning, mm-hmm. uh, your senior staff is going to con- congregate in the uh, in in the conference room at nine as a. usual. A. Yeah. Then I will. I'm going to send a message to uh, my XO, Commander Rue. He's probably already there. Of course. I mean, no, <laughs> well, not I, an hour early. Yeah. What, like thirty minutes early? Maybe fifteen. Um, I'm certainly up there by then You've because you replicated the paper and put it up by what eight forty five a.m. Yes, that most certainly. I've okay. also been there about since I have to check my notes. I think it's uh, about seven thirty in order to debrief gamma shift. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So. So when I wake up at I don't know seven seven thirty, I'll send that message to um, Commander Rue to okay. just say, uh, Commander, please meet in our ready room. Um, maybe we'll not. have to learn military time. Fifteen <laughs> minutes early. Oh, I know. Time is hard. Like. Oh wait, oh, oh, eight thirty. I want to go. Oh wait, thirty. Oh dark thirty. Oh eight thirty. Oh eight thirty is morning. That's fine. Oh eight thirty. I just wanted to discuss something with you briefly before our morning briefing. Thank you. I sir. Love, Captain Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> you immediately receive a reply from HR. Start with <laughs> Love, lots of love. <laughs> lots of love. Love, love Martinez. Love. XO, XO. Lesson three, lesson three. Captain doesn't report selfie. it. Rue doesn't tell. <laughs> um, okay, this is not so. Like- 8.30, rolls mm-hmm. around, um, mm-hmm. stepping into the conference room, Captain, you see your first officer is there setting up paper and pencils. Fantastic. Commander? Sir? You received my message, thank you. Aye, sir. Um, I just wanted to touch base with you on something. Um, I received in my report last night, I was looking things over, that maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Um, Ensign Sage, put in a request for transfer. Yes. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. She didn't talk to me. She didn't, didn't talk, talk as far as I can tell to anybody. I talked to a couple of the other con officers. She seems to be keeping it under tight wraps. I have to, I have to confess something. I feel like maybe I have been, uh, frankly, like neglecting her and neglecting checking in with her in the past few weeks. I mean, we've obviously been through a lot. We've been going through a lot. Um, would you know if she's? opening up to anybody else in particular, or discussing anything with, uh, do we have a therapist on board? Probably not, right? It's a, it's a science a counselor. vessel. There's there has a, to be a counselor, There right? is, I saw it on our ship. That's, assistant okay. counselor, I'm, I'm Oh, assistant sure. counselor? Yeah. Assistant mm-hmm. counselor, so I'm gonna ask Rue, like, do you know if she's made any meetings with uh, our assistant counselor, or? I generally do not make it my business to check I understand. Too much of that, just to I maintain understand. some semblance of privacy. I get it. It's low priority, but but again, I just wanted to check in with a member of my senior staff, and I certainly appreciate that, sir. Do you have any other insight for what you think she might be going through? The specifics, no. But okay. what I can tell you of Sage is that 
it seems to me that she, her demeanor is so open and friendly that it can sometimes obscure the fact that she does not talk very deeply to many of the people in this crew. That's what I was afraid of. Okay. Right. I've done what I could to make overtures, and it isn't something that she seemed interested in, and so I certainly understand if not everybody wants to be close oh, yeah. to their command staff, and so I've I get backed that. off, but all the more so that this should... I just want to make sure that somebody... Inside both of us. Yeah. I just want me. to ensure that somebody in our senior staff is somebody who wants to be here, somebody who is reliable in moments of crisis, or I want to make sure that nobody is doing anything that, that, that would make her not be able to do her job, or frankly, make Sage uh, not feel wanted or appreciated or, or like they would want to be out here. We're going to be out here for six months. I'm going to talk with her tonight. Is this a meeting that you want to be present at, or do you think that it would be... You want to be present? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Just have a, a, a talk with her and see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Commander. Sir, one other thing before the rest of the senior staff congregate. Mm-hmm. We're going to be heading out into the neutral zone pretty soon, and then out beyond that Yeah. for a long time. Yeah. There is some matter of business yeah. to be looked into before we get all the way out there for a good while. What kind of business? I saw a lot of ships at Starbase 138 seeming to be tasked out the Bajoran sector, the Cardassian sector. Hmm. Okay. I didn't see any that were assigned to any rescue missions. All right, I think I get what you're what you're saying. Do you want to say this? Had that intel for a while, sir. And we're going to be going in the direction of the neutral zone. Do you want to bring this up during our meeting? If that's Please? Acceptable to you? Yeah, of course. But I wanted Let's to check it. in first. Thank you. No, I agree. I'm going to replicate some coffee. Do you want anything? Sure. No, thank you, sir. All right. All right. Well, before we jump into that, to the senior staff meeting for the day, which is going to be an interesting thing, uh, we have somebody here who wants to make a quick announcement, who wants to come chat. Somebody who had brought up a long time ago that they wanted to come check out the Shield of Tomorrow set, and oh, now cool. they're here. So I get to finally meet you because... Uh, Come on in, jump on in over here with me, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mad Myra, everybody. Hello. Hi. 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 Thank you all for inviting me aboard your ship. <laughs> I see. We just we redecorated. Are, we're on an intrepid class vessel. I can see that. Yes, yes. Uh, we just put up the your USS curtains. Sally ride. That's a great. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the registry number? Uh, NCC one seven. Uh oh. Yeah. One seven oh oh. Yeah, like, that, is, that is an early registry that's number. That's wait, pretty that's intrepid. Wait. Ancient one seven. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that is, is definitely. Did I ask the wrong question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, we know our shit so well. Let me ask the following question: Do you guys often land her? Because the intrepid class first episode, <laughs> well, yeah. first episode, first episode she landed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's Funny great. First episode yeah. she landed planet side and had to escape a moon that was I going was to collide. Actually, having a discussion last night before we did After Trek, which mm -hmm. is the Star Trek Discovery After yes. Show, which your yeah. kids should be watching. Uh, <laughs> we, I was, there was an, what is the alert for landing? Don't they have, don't they, is it not, it's Maybe not a red alert, it's not a that. yellow alert. It's blue. It's, it's, it's a, a blue, blue alert. alert. I was right. Did you yeah. say blue alert? Did I did. Oh. And my supervising producer, Lori, who works on, uh, uh, on the show and she's uh, worked for Trek movie, she could not put it through. So we made and that I was mistake. Like, Listen, that was I made that mistake too because I think I put you guys at yellow alert yeah. initially, yeah. and the audience, yeah, the audience, the community. First came of all, out, you like, go to yellow alert. The shields are coming up. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be a wanna, problem well, landing. Hey, you'd probably do when you want to enter an atmosphere. Sure. Uh, that all confuses me the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, the you shuttle know, did just fine without shields. Fun really. fact: the Shenzo, which mm -hmm. you see in the first episode of Discovery. That is capable of landing. You know, I saw it because yeah. in the opening scene, yeah. you in actually see Shinzo enter. That's why the bridge is on the bottom. 
No mm. kidding. I was yes. wondering about that. I thought it was a very dumb design because it would expose <laughs> your belly to attack when sure. you're trying uh -huh. to do maneuvers. Yeah. I'm sliding in. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. being told but to slide. Cuddly. I'm gonna slide right. I can scoot yeah. over. Are you uh -huh. like? Are you like? Do you, do you like, like a, are you dungeon mastering them from the future because you have the uniform, or are they trapped in a dark no, quadrant? No, situation? I can tell you. So actually, <laughs> so, I need this information. Yeah. So this, so uh, Shield of Tomorrow takes place during season three of DS Nine. So we're in the entry of the Voyager ah, era. Ah, sure. So yeah, admirals just, are we, still wearing sort of a DS Nine style uniform. We just while, lost Voyager a few months ago. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We found, or rather, Jean Luc Picard found Admiral Kirk's body. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The galaxy again. Yep. On Viridian six, Ooh. Viridian six. In nice, six. nice. You nailed it. Uh, no, you and, but uh, we don't know our ship's registry. Yeah, yeah. but what's okay? okay. That's okay. okay. It's because it's because Matt Mira showed up. We need like, to know these things. Matt, yeah. ask us what ask us what kind of alcohol we have on board right now. What kind of alcohol do you have on board? Cling right on blood wine, baby. Nice. Can't have a Trek series that Cling on blood goes great with Gok. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. We, we got a lot of Klingons coming up. We should have, but it would have spoiled by the time I we got wait. to the neutral zone. I won't much better with blood If we had gotten some Gok. Much better with blood Sure. Well, yeah. 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 It so you, you've got yeah. you've got a show coming up. You've got your the return of Sidekick coming Sidekick up. Sidekick yeah. with Matt Meyer is returning mm -hmm. to Project Alpha. I'll be a co-compatriot of you guys. We're over here on the on the... Whatever side of things that is. Stage one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. You guys. That, whatever. Stage whatever. Stage whatever. Next. Point is, I, I get to go. I go to New York on the weekends, do the after trek, fly, wow. go do the uh, Goldbergs, and then I drive over here and make another show. Because <laughs> the world needs more content. I agree. Yeah. I think the world needs more trek. <laughs> uh, and if I, you know, once we're in between on Discovery mm -hmm. and I have a little more time in my schedule, I would love to. You should come oh, sail man. with the Sally Ride. I would. Yes. I would love to roll up, maybe like a lieutenant commander, probably an ops. I'm just saying. I feel like ops, you guys need right? more ops. Man, yeah, I don't going, want a command division. It's too much. I always go for ops it's too. It's too much pressure. <laughs> Matt, are you going human or are you gonna uh, mix it up a little Listen, bit? Listen, I probably, here's actually what I will yeah, say. Yeah, bring it, bring it. I would roll up an Andorian because there oh, aren't enough. Yes, yes. thank oh, you. I would, there are not enough Andorians yes. seen the on the. I agree. It's like a founding member of the yeah. Federation. I agree. Why are there see, not more Andorians? You know what we're gonna see in that discovery. I well, I want to see more Dorians, but Hopefully. I asked, I asked, and I was like, "Are we going to see more Dorians?" And they, their answers seem to be not as many as I want. I oh. That's what Never I'll enough. give. I'll give that to Enterprise. The amount of Andorians that they put on that show was fantastic, oh, yeah. and they brought back who, the actors yeah. whose name yeah. I'm slipping me, Jeffrey but Jeffrey he played Jeffrey 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 Yes, he plays them all. He is one of yeah. my <laughs> favorite actors that has ever walked onto a Star Trek set. Matt, yeah. we just I found out the name of a classic Andorian film. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that Did you? Our yeah. doctor is a huge fan of. Huge fan. And I and and I, I think this is the original. It's called Shran Forged by Blizzard. Oh, is movie. it? What is the genre? It's, it's a biopic. biopic. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of Shran. <laughs> sure, of right. Shran. I understand. So there have been you, several so different iterations as well. 74710. That's yep. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. registry right. number. Yeah, yeah, I had to look at our own wiki that the fans have created. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the Thank registry you. number <laughs> of Discovery is 1031, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. NCC 1031. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you're thinking, oh my god, this is supposed to be 10 years before Star Trek, the original series, yeah. mm -hmm. which is 1701, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So right. this is all stuff I think about when I'm about to go do after that. We find yeah. that weird. I find it weird, too. But then I figured it out. And I don't know that they accept this explanation, but my own fan explanation for this is not that it's section 31 with black badges. I'm pushing mm -hmm. that away out of my mm -hmm. brain. It's A, that Brian Fuller really likes Halloween, which is a fact. Ah. And B, I'm imagining that they laid the keel for this big ass science ship, and then for some reason we're like, fuck, well, yeah, we can't build that. And then the war happened, and they were like, we gotta build everything. And that already had a registry number, so they built 1031 later. Oh. Mm. Ooh, Thank you. Out. That's how I retcon things. Yeah. Theories. Oh. You know my favorite ship that named on Discovery, though? What? Oh. <laughs> uh, the ride. Yes, the reference to the, to the ride. Yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah. That was pretty fun. Uh, I think, uh, by the way, I love your set. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. It really yeah. is gorgeous. Thank I saw you. it and I was very jealous. I said, why is this not the set to sidekick with Matt Meyer? It, yeah. Funny thing is, is we actually, um, uh, we actually uh, uh, reached out to CBS and they gave us all these reference photos from Voyager, oh. from the set of Voyager to use in helping build this set. They were super sweet yeah. to us. It's 100% authentic. It's yeah, like, very it was pretty cool of them, yeah. Those are all yeah. official yeah. Lakuta grams? <laughs> yeah, the, if you, yeah, if you look on the L cars, there's actually little hidden messages in all the buttons. Oh. 
Oh yeah, a lot Good of stuff. initials in there. You probably mm-hmm. got an R D Moore somewhere. There's a I'm Japan. Sure. There's a Doctor Who. There's yeah, that's, uh, that's adorable. There's a lot of yeah. Do you have any conduits nice. that go nowhere, do nothing? I'm, uh, I'm almost certain they do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. is that your warp field integrity? Is that what that middle vessel analysis is? Uh, have they decided what that is? What is that? Um, I don't know. I always like to picture that as a uh, master control program from Tron, but I sure. I feel like that might be a little out of the the canon. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the audience doesn't see what we're pointing at right now, but oh, there's a big oh, yellow oh, thing. Just take our word for it. There's this big what weird. Is, uh, the deflector right It's not as cool oh, as the it? Sally Ride thing. So. But yeah. And I will say, the next thing I'll say is part of my I can say what I want to because I'm not on CBS's dime right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the people that make the badges, that hold the license to the com badges, mm-hmm. these deltas are way too shiny. <laughs> I did notice they got the gloss to it. You cannot find a good looking delta to save mm-hmm. your life. I Power recommend. Yeah, you gotta go get an acrylic one from, That's a good from Etsy or something. Sometimes yeah, I noticed that. Sometimes I'm, I do things like. Do they have it's true. You're saying the deltas have to change. I'm saying what I'm saying is they're not, it's not your hey, fault. You. It's who licensed the. It's true. They're all glossy. It's the licensing. Do they have, like, of the, do they, they shouldn't like, be that glossy. Plastic yeah. toy ones from the '90s. You they do. Find? They actually have yeah. those at Star Trek convention, and they're yeah. freaking expensive yeah. because they yeah. know. They know that that's screen accurate. You want to look. You want to look OG. Yeah. I still have mine from the Star Trek. We'll do this on Minds and Cracks. We'll just. Just give me all the. It's the greatest, the, the greatest, the greatest uh, four days of my life for the Star Trek experience in Vegas. I used to oh. like it. Did you really? I was one of the actors there. Oh my god. Yeah. I, Look how far I've come. You got it. You're, you're, I can't escape. You're yet again on a fake starship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've never left. You cannot escape the gravity no, of a starship. No. Uh, anyway, Commander guys, wouldn't let me thank leave. you so it's much for coming by. I will yeah. let you get back to all of this. Cool. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. To watch the After Trek. Alive. Watch After Trek if you want to know more about about Discovery and then see my face. Which Sidekick is coming too out. Much of it. You guys a, are filming that, that uh, next Tuesday. Sidekick next Tuesday. Next Tuesday on Alpha. What is the, what is the, who's, on, who's on the premiere? Um, Maybe Rob Hubel. I don't know. Maybe Whoa. Rob. Maybe. Ooh. Maybe Rob Hubel. Ricky Lindholm? Oh. 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 Garfunkel and Oates. Oh She's God. great. She guys, we're having nice. a great time over there. Oh. Swing by. You know, when you're done, maybe you can swing by and sit in the audience. We're usually not allowed back there, so you're saying it's okay. I'm saying it's fine. All right. right. If I'm allowed in here, you're allowed in there. Nerdist usually tasers me every time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 phasers. I, I remember the universal remote phaser they made, the type two phaser yes! universal yeah, remote. Hard that thing was right. thing. That's hard to get. That was a sort of first contacty style. Mm. It was don't, later. Don't we I have, have a good stuff. Phaser I'm reminiscing. Computer mice. <laughs> yeah, computer mice. But okay. you can't use it with any other computer because the, the only way to program it into your computer is with a floppy disk, and people don't use those anymore. So it's now <laughs> it's just decoration in a box. Hey, I get it. But I have a Doctor Who sonic screwdriver universal remote that has only sat in the box because mm. I think it's ridiculous to turn your volume up like this. <laughs> While fun, <laughs> ridiculous. Talison right. gave me one. No on ridiculousness in Doctor Who. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely I know, not. Absolutely Guys, not. get back to your mission. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy to see an Andorian Chief Petty <laughs> Officer. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love. I love enlisted officers. Uh, <laughs> Chief O'Brien's one of my favorites. Oh. Chief. So, Chief Petty That's Officer. Do your thing. To You're fill. enlisted. <laughs> what does it mean, though? Did you not finish the academy? Did you go through a different program? Have we figured she that was, out yet? Yeah, we actually it's not. We're we're gonna disclose that. Yet. Yeah, we're gonna disclose oh. that through the game. But yes, we oh. have that oh. figured out. Wait a minute, spoil it. Yeah. I'm gonna that. go yeah. before I spoil <laughs> more. Of what All possibly is my life story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna head down to engineering for you and do some deteriorant conduit maintenance. Oh, awesome. Great. Oh, Jim is gonna be so grateful. The matter antimatter flow is a little. Yeah. I would. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffrey's two neural gel packs are kind of. Yeah. We need some look into the bio neural gel packs. Thank you, guys. All right. Be in engineering if you need me. All right. Cool. All right. Mind the hollow target. Nice You're good to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hollows as an appetite. Don't tell about the hollow target. Good, good times. Good times. Is it just delight. pop into random? Is he is. Random delight. 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 He is just a ball of sunshine in a pair of shoes. That man. Yeah. yeah. No. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, it's funny. So real quick to close that up. Uh, when when we first started, uh, when Shield of Tomorrow first came out, and we had all you guys tuning in, and everything was great. Like, uh, I got a message immediately from that guy going, "This is Star Trek show on Geek and Sundry." I want to be on that show. Like it was great. So, but then threatening you? Yeah, no, he got <laughs> dude. Like he threatened to headbutt me. Yeah. There was a, there was, you know, he had a, he sent, headbutt? he sent, he yeah, he sent what? a bloody dick talk to my house. Oh man, it was, it was, it was awesome. Say the word. Because it was Matt Put it on the wall, right? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, but no, it was great. And and so we've been trying to find a way to uh, to uh, get him. But then you know he had to go and get After Trek. So mm, that poor yeah. soul. Get more jobs. The heart <laughs> needs. <laughs> so let's get to our staff meeting. 
Because we got a big staff meeting coming up. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And the most thrilling yes. part of Star Did we just successfully, like, pot the little guy from the Jeffrey's Tube and have I got Are him back at Sigma now? Uh, have we made a decision? I've been in the Jeffrey's yeah. Tube a long time. Um, hey. So this is, this is what I'm going <laughs> to... She slept yeah, in the Jeffrey's Tube. <laughs> so the, the, let, me, the let me go ahead and tell you where we're at with know. that. Um, upon inspection of this life form on the... I'll go ahead and tell you straight up. Um, upon inspection and scanning the life form, it is a genetic match to the creature that died in your sick bay. It is absolutely a sporous remnant of that creature that has spawned here. Not that you had any doubt, but now you have physical, con- like is scientific it confirmation. Any of the dynamic change? Yes. Okay. Um, it is demonstrating it is a remarkable rate of growth, and probably the reason it was able to interact with and grow on the bioneural gel pack is that it has adapted. Biog- biologically to be able to get nutrients from the energy that's coming out of the conduits and the combination of the bioneural gel packs. Now, okay. what that means, you don't know. But right now, Has it, it's, grown more? it hasn't grown more. It almost looks like it's regulating its own growth based on its environment. Wow. So it hasn't... It looks the same, though. It does, yeah, okay. except, well, the leaf has sort of unfurled a little bit more, because if you remember correctly, it was kind of rolled up onto yes. itself, it and now it's kind of bloomed a little bit. It's because I've been singing to it all my life. No, that's what it is. No. Uh, but to, to conclude, what you've discovered in your hours of investigating this thing is that it is very much alive, it is very healthy, and you have no idea how to safely dislodge it from the bioneural gel pack. Okay. It's yeah. probably going to be a whole thing. I think I would order that we're monitoring that power consumption because we only found it because of power disruptions. That's what sent it all into the tubes. Yes. Which so we're going to hold pending meeting. I, I will tell you this. We'll put an opinion Also, with, the, uh, with further investigation as to what is going on with the power that's coming through those conduits and the bioneural gel packs, those power disruptions seem to have ceased. It's almost as if the plant creature itself was sort of trying to find its footing and now is harmonized itself with the power transfers that are going through this entire, uh, Mm. the entire, the the conduit itself. The one other thing that I would be tasking um, the rest of Beta and Gamma Shift engineering with doing would be to take um, sampling from random bioneural gel packs throughout the ship. Okay, Uh, Jiv. And we'll get the results of that when we get the results of that. Hopefully Jiv basically time. organizes 12 engineering teams mm-hmm. to Good. spread out across the ship and hit every Jeffrey tube over the next 24 hours and do diagnostics. It's yep. going to be a huge undertaking, but Jiv can get it done. Yeah. So we um, we're starting with a random sampling from various locations just to get preliminary data. Sure. We'll have to do a comprehensive one later, but you know, we get from a few decks just to get a notion. So this will be something you bring up in the senior staff meeting mm-hmm. here. Um, this is... Yeah, we'll be talking about that, but okay. like that's but between this time while tube, so you the probably already gave these four of us were in that tube this together. This conversation is happening. You're totally within that your rank to to give that order. Absolutely. So we we moved forward, with my and that so that's that's the status of where we're at with that. Um, you guys are two days away from the Klingon uh, neutral zone. We'll go ahead and place you about there. Okay. Oh, wait, didn't I give you an exact time? I think you, it was a week. Wasn't you said it? we were a week. Yeah, we're a week, a week away. Yeah, yeah. We, were we a week are out. not two okay. days away. So you're not two days away. You're now about five or six days away. Yep. Approximately. Um, so meeting up for the senior staff meeting. Um, as the staff meeting doors open, um, Jiv walks in, and following Jiv is Chief Petty Officer Ren, <clears throat> who's stepping into your very first senior staff meeting. Before you arrive on into this staff meeting, Jiv said, "Now listen." I'm never going to tell you to repress who you are, but in senior staff meetings, just Keep your act, mouth shut. Got it. Yeah, and act like everybody else. Just <laughs> be a tight ass, and you'll be fine. Right. Just act like an officer. You know what that's like. Just act like an officer. If yeah. if all else goes wrong, act like Rue. If you act like the commander. You want me to smack someone? Well, no, don't smack anyone. Just okay. Like, yeah, no, don't smack anyone, but just act, you know. Cool people. Who yeah. Like Got it. Cool, I like that. Yeah, cool. Great. <laughs> You'll be fine. <clears throat> Cut to you all walking into the room. You see the crew filtering in. Um, everyone takes their seats. Um, you see paper and pencil in front of you. Um. <laughs> And Jiv just looks at you and goes, <laughs> and 
Uh, you're all assembled now. This will be the first staff meeting since you left the Starbase. Morning, everybody. Morning, Morning Captain. Captain. Chief Wren, welcome to your first uh, senior staff meeting. Thank you, Captain. That's paper and pencil in front of you, courtesy of Commander Rue. So. For anybody who doesn't know, Chief Wren here is going to be taking over the op station based off my recommendation and the Captain's approval. She'll be working on the bridge with the rest of y'all. I'll be down in engineering, making sure Sally keeps running properly. Great. Speaking of uh, engineering, I'm glad you both are here. I think that our first item this morning is the update on our on our growth in the Jeffries tubes. What do you got for me? Shift, Ren, Doctor, what's the update? Well, I think that oh, yeah, and again, we're just like we, yeah. The Lord Sage never no. knows anything. Yeah. Neither one of you have There's been informed. There's a growth in the Jeffries tube. Captain. Okay, 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 okay. Jim raises his hands. <laughs> Captain, I was not aware of this growth. What is the situation? We only confirmed it just last night. Like a mole or a? We didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. It was after dark. It was after shift hours. We've had it's teams late in the night. looking at it overnight. We've got yes. data. I would have told you right away. If there was Commander. any emergency, we would have been alerted. But since we were off duty, we let uh, Gamma Shift just sort of observe and report. Right. And Commander now, Tulan, you have to see this thing. We, uh, I don't know. Do you want me to say it, Doctor, or do you want to say it? I'm going to let the captain decide how we describe it. Well, captain doesn't know what we discovered yet. I'm hoping it's some good news. It's... We mm. confirmed it's the thing you beamed up from Regula. Yeah. It's... Alive and it's attached to one of our bio neural gel packs. It's, I don't know if it's, I don't know how this works. I mean, it, it shouldn't have survived the environmental system, but somehow it did. I've been doing some investigating, and uh, at some point there was a. My suspicion is after looking at footage from when it was beamed on board that when this thing crumbled, there was some sporic. I guess outburst. I'm not a biologist, but that's the only thing I can figure. It wasn't on the ship very long, and the only time any kind of particulate entered the at the air of the ship was at that particular moment. So, somehow it entered the environmental systems here on the Sally Ride, and it's lodged itself in one of the only places it could draw nutrients. Interestingly enough, what we discovered is that it's actually pulling not only nutrients from the bioneural gel packs, but it's actually replenishing those nutrients as it's formed a symbiotic relationship, and it's drawing energy from the power that's flowing through the conduits. Uh, I haven't told the doctor this yet, but as miraculous as this is, I think it's kind of terrifying. Why is that? Because it's the unknown. <laughs> he just shrugs. Not saying we don't, you know, name it or something. I'm just... It's something that's alive, and it's on my girl, and it's doing things I don't understand. Well... Shiv, um, I would love to quote my personal hero right now and just say that there's no such thing as the unknown. Only things temporarily hidden, temporarily not understood. Fortunately right. for you, you are on a ship with a lot of impressive brains that are probably itching to take a look at this. Captain and Commander Shiv, do we know how fast this growth has progressed overnight? And it shows have, have, there been any, have there been any attempts to contain its range, at least. That's all you, Doctor. It shows remarkable dynamism, uh, but as of yet, it is adapting without increasing in volume. That might, we have preliminary reason to believe that it may be reflecting its atmosphere in the Jeffreys tube. There's a, in our previous encounter with this species, there was a proto-awareness strongly suggested by its behavior. It's true, we don't know how it got past our environmental field in the quarantine, and that's definitely something to keep an eye on, yeah. but we know that it survived. New life. So it completely adapted and integrated into the Sally Ride? Well, so far it isn't reaching throughout. We're checking other systems or planning yeah, what's, to check. What's the update on that? Do we have those reports yet, Commander Rue? We may have some preliminary data, but that's going to take a day or sure. so, sir. Okay. It's worth noting that protocol would have us turn around, return to Starbase 138, and most likely have every bioneural gel pack ripped out of this ship. Okay, we'll be sure to make a note it's of that. It's not a democracy, but if it was, I would vote against that. 
Why is that shit? Because then Starfleet gets involved. Yeah. I, mean, I know that's what should happen. But we all know what happens after that. I mean, they could, they could dry dock Sally until he dislodged the thing. Who knows? And that's not my biggest concern. What we know for a fact is whatever it is, they'll take it. Mm -hmm. And do who knows what to it. It's not that I don't trust Starfleet Command. But I don't trust Starfleet Command. And I don't know what they're going to do to this thing. And I don't know who's taking an interest in whatever it is that y'all have found out. I just, I don't know, Captain. The way they stormed on board our ship. I know. I know. Uh, what I can say to everybody in this room regarding that is not much, but that Starfleet feels that anything related to this Genesis project was extremely dangerous and could be extremely dangerous. Now, I want to ask everybody in this room, including you who were observing it last night, Chief Wren, I want to get your opinion on this. Do you feel whether through our data or even instinctually, that this could pose a threat to the ship. Ren? Uh, sir, I, I was... I was with it all night. It... Seems okay. Um, I have concerns. I know I'm contradicting myself, but I've got concerns. It's alright. I want to hear them. What are they? Well, first of all, Ren's right. You know, it doesn't seem to pose any immediate threat. But the truth of the matter is, Captain, is this thing has lodged itself onto a bioneural gel pack. I understand, yeah. That's one of the new systems that we use to help the processing power of Sally Wright's computer systems. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I don't know how intelligent this thing is. It's obviously incredibly advanced. But if it's lodged itself onto a bioneural gel pack, I can't predict what it can do or what will happen to computer systems. or yeah, I just none don't know. Can. It's not I enough understand. info. Yeah, none of us can. All I know is, from what the doctor tells me, this thing evolves faster than anything we've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. And it's and if it's fully integrated, it could spread to other systems systems of yeah. the ship, Captain. And then where are we, Captain? I'm having trouble understanding why this is even a point of discussion. It seems that this life form has the potential to greatly disturb and damage our system's vital our ship's vital systems. You're right. We should be turning around immediately, and we should also be... Our priority right now should be to contain its growth and to excise it if possible. You're absolutely right. And the reason this is a discussion right now is because that was going to be my next question. I wanted to know what the situation was in terms of removing it, containing it safely, and preserving a new life form, which is, again, I don't have to remind anybody in here, that's one of our missions in Starfleet, is to meet and contact new life. So what's what's the update? Have we found a way to possibly safely remove it? I have a plan. Okay. Uh, it's going to require the commander, the doctor, and the chief. Three of them working together to pull this thing off. I estimate it'll take at least six hours we to prep. We have six hours. I think I can come up with a way to get it off the neural gel pack, but we're going to have to come up with a new source of power and nutrition because... Even though it evolves fast, it'll stabilize wherever we put it, but we're going to have to repot it, so to speak. How much time... Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, how much time would it take to replicate new bioneural gel packs? Well, the ones that we have are pretty complex. I could build a new one through replication maybe in an hour. Is there a way to build some kind of containment that we could place the pack in and feed it its own power source and, and nu nutrition as we pull it out, like almost a containment to where it, we can almost replicate the power source that that's, it's receiving. That way we don't even have to actually take it out of the pack. We could just remove the pack itself and, and build some kind of containment that continuously yeah. gives it the power it needs. That's no, that's an excellent idea, but that's actually the idea I was talking about. Okay, oh, great. The, the, the system thing is, have a no. the systems idea. of our shuttles are independent from Good. Sally's. That's an excellent idea. It's worth oh, noting that there's nothing on board a shuttle that support the implementation of a bio, bio neural gel pack, but that doesn't matter. We can I still could outfit it for one. Yeah, we Look can it still. Into the warp core of a dump shuttle. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I would trust that. I don't know how well I would trust an Orion's dump shuttle warp. I don't core. know how well I trust a life form on one of our <laughs> shuttles. Yeah, but I would rather. 
I mean, I, I personally don't have to. Error. There's an option where we don't have to connect this to any shuttle, right? There's an option. It's true, can, but okay. we if you want to sustain it, field. it's probably going to need some kind of antimatter. I see. Power okay. source, because that's what it's depending on right now. Now, there's a good chance that if we unplug it, that it might evolve to a point where it won't need it anymore. But mm -hmm. I don't. None of us have enough data about this thing. We saw already that when we excised it. What's that? What we saw already when we excised it from its mother, mm -hmm. it died. Regular one, yeah. It died very rapidly. From that cave. So I, I would agree that. that we would need to find some power source to replace it. But I would very much like to do some scans on it Fantastic. in its place to see whether there are other substances or 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 systems that could be disturbed by it. And uh, I don't want any harm to come to this creature as well, but uh, if, if we were going to go by Starfleet protocol, if we were able to sustain it onto a shuttle, I'd volunteer to fly it back to Starbase 138 and notify Starfleet Intelligence. Noted, Ensign, thank you. All right, well I want to let everybody go, be able to go do their jobs because it seems like we all have a lot of exciting ideas, there's a lot of potential for, for new information, for scans, and I have the utmost faith in my crew. So thank you all for giving your all to try and figure out this problem. I want to try to figure out this problem before we report it to Starfleet and potentially have to head back because I believe that we can fix this while we are en route to the Shackleton Expanse. Um, and if it's we can't, then we can't, and then we'll just have to go from there. But I. Just keep me posted, and, and this is going to be the number one priority for the, this vessel today during Alpha Ship. Great. Aye, aye, Captain. All right, so before we dismiss, uh, I want um, Commander Rue to, to um, brief us with some of their um, concerns and uh, some ideas that they've got for heading into Klingon space. Commander? We're heading into the neutral zone. We're planning on going to the Shackleton Expanse. But en route, we've had reason to believe that Commodore Malgog is going to be in this area. We have intelligence that we haven't yet acted on and that Starfleet doesn't seem to be acting on to rescue Zadus. That's a priority on our way. We have a duty to him. And I'd like to see it done. I agree. Commander, do you think that it's possible that we will run into Commodore Malgog? Possible. Even likely. Honestly, sir, preferred. We are not going to wait another six months plus travel time mm -hmm. to complete the Shackleton Expanse mission before rescuing a crew member to whom we have a fundamental duty. Mm -hmm. We don't. That intelligence was not the freshest when we got it. We've been dawdling. Okay. It's about time to get this done and get our crew member home. For the next few days, before we hit the neutral zone, Commander, I'm putting you in charge of collecting information to try to get a lead on Zadis. And if you come up with anything, then we might have to... Uh, change up some plans on the way to our station. Sally Wright's talking about going off the map a little bit. Hopefully and it won't be too far out of our no, way. No, I dig it. Captain, <laughs> may excited. I make a suggestion? Yes, please, Ensign. Uh, I think it would be smart to also assign a engineering team to the dump shuttles down in the cargo bay. If we can get those up and in good condition, we could use them for the targo bay. We could use them for... Uh, Possible diversions. Okay. Yeah. Captain, we may need to make a call to someone who said that he would be helpful to Starfleet oh in the future. Oh, God. you got to be kidding me. Hmm. Problem? All right. No, sir. No problem at all. Okay. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. So, again, to reiterate, our priority today for the next six hours is to try to figure out how to get that plant out of our ship and keep it alive. Yes, sir. I want uh, updates every 30 minutes on the status of the uh, animal or plant life, alien life, as well as um, 
you know, obviously if anything comes up, then that's what the, uh, and then we'll deal with that. Um, after that, I'll assign an engineering team to fix up our dump shuttle to make sure that that's good to go. And we've got, what, five, six days? Something funny, Jeff? Sorry, sir. It just, I love that we've officially taken to calling them dump shuttles. I'm actually quite fond of that name. Anson? Captain, we do have a uh, Captain Zazaret's ship, which, well, his shuttle, I should say, which we could use almost as bait, since I believe he and the commander were not on good terms. That's true. That's good thinking. That's great, Anson. Um, great. That we'll is if we, exactly. if we run into... And if we so don't exactly. turn around yeah. and return to Starbase exactly. 138 per Starfleet But protocol. first priority is to try to save this alien life, and I want all of you brilliant brains on it as soon as possible. Okay? I'll see it done, Captain. Great, thank you. Dismissed. It gets up immediately. <coughs> Jif, uh -huh. would you like to... <laughs> should the three of us create a plan? Definitely. I'm going to need all the help I can get, and the three of you are the smartest people I know. You have to see this. Jeff, if, if you need an extra hand, uh, I will totally. After yeah, the no. fact, I've, Jeffrey's tubes aren't really. Captain, I don't like tight spaces. If it's all right, mm -hmm. it would be wonderful to have Instant Sage as a second hand. Her knowledge of engineering would become very useful. In That's fantastic. Hands. I'm going to send her down there as soon as she, after she um, just visits her station, just to make sure that our ship everything is on the up and up in terms of navigation, and then she's all yours. I'll is that all right, there. Ensign? Yes, sir. Okay, great. <clears throat> Um, I, I've just been mimicking you every time you've stood or waited or done <laughs> something. I've just been the exact <laughs> movements you've been doing, and then just Captain, Commander, Commander, and some like uh, Doctor. All right, as everyone begins <laughs> to filter out, um, uh, Chief, Chief. Chief Ren, can I? Can you hang back for a second? Yeah. Okay. Jiv yeah, just yeah. goes and just keeps, walks out the door. <laughs> like good luck. <laughs> kind of just moves out. Um, who's who's staying? Just just Ren? Just Chief Ren? It's okay. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. I, this isn't like a one-on-one -on -one private thing. Sure. I'm fine with there even being people within earshot. As I say, what I'm about to say to Chief on the Ren. way out, I'm 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 just talking to Lon's ear off. They like, nerd him so the hard. Amazing, <laughs> amazing properties. I thought it had been lost, but the regeneration just in the sample we've seen is incredible. Okay, um, word has begun to slowly spread throughout the ship. The Ox crew alone has all been talking about uh, <coughs> what they have. Um, I, I won't lie, because of the excitement that's th spread throughout the ship, you've learned that the auxiliary crew of the USS Sally Ride has come to nickname the plant creature that has suddenly miraculously uh, made an appearance. I hope it's the same nickname I have in my head. Crap. What would that nickname be? So it's the Genesis life form? Yes. So I'm really hoping they're naming it Jenny. No, they've actually named it, I believe, Plant Face. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, Plant Face or Tree Face. I think it's Plant Face, Mr. Plant Face. First name, last name. Plant Face. <laughs> it's Groot in my head. Feel free to plant tweet, face. correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm, pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw the, the Discord chat uh, I mean, hashtagging Plant Face. If we find another one, it'll be Jenny 2, and then Jenny, Jenny 2, three, <laughs> and then Jenny 4. Oh, it's an Audrey 2! <laughs> oh, God. Um, Chief Ren, uh... Yes, Captain. Did I, thank it, you for your... I'm sorry? Nothing. No, you didn't. You, you didn't do anything wrong. In fact, thanks for your insight earlier. I just wanted to say, I, I might run um, our senior staff meetings a little bit differently than other ships. I'm letting you know personally that this is the place to share your insight, opinion, instinct, your gut feeling, whatever it is that you have. My job as captain is to listen to every single brilliant mind's opinions, even if I happen to disagree with that opinion. That's my job. So. It's a little bit more open, a little bit freer. Feel free to share your opinion if you feel that it has any value. And the fact that you're in this meeting means that it does. So thanks again, just going forward, if you feel like you wanted to chime in a little bit more, permission granted. Thank you, sir. Great. Ren, yeah. if you want to learn your way around the bridge after we have you off duty with the Genesis life form, we'll have you shadow me for a few days. It would be an honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Dismissed. Welcome to the bridge. <sighs> oh, boy. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Leaving. Not bad. Uh, I imagine Ren stepping out of the conference room. Uh, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> How does anyone breathe in there? 
I'm like standing right behind her. Like, uh, excuse me, I need to go. <laughs> Captain's chair. Excuse me, chief friend. Thank you. All right. So, <laughs> was that it for the senior staff meeting then? I mean, yeah. Was there okay. anything else? No, I just dis I dismissed everybody. That's okay. what I. Yeah. Did. No. Any <laughs> other I'm meetings that are home, being no. had yeah. or had after okay. Alpha shift? Yeah. All right. So then, what mm -hmm. we're going to do now is um, we are going to set up uh, an extended task roll. Yes. Have fun, nerds. I am ready for this. Yep. Science, um, maybe. The extended task roll. So let's break hours. out. Turn I'm ready. your books to page 89. I got some talent to use. You guys are so ready? Be working, Me too. You guys been working I'm pretty right. hard to get. Uh, to get plant face off of. Am I, the am I there okay. yet, or am I, I still at the, the helm? Like What's face. that? Am I at the helm still? Or You're, did I this is, so this whole process, um, not yeah. only researching and developing a plan of how to remove the plant from the bioneural gel pack is going to take a while, mm -hmm. but in so I would say that Sage is constantly on the bridge, back down doing research. On the bridge, awesome. back down. Because so I didn't get to finish work. my thought to Jiv before he jumped in and said, let me use you. I was going to continue with the fact I will lend a hand once uh, things are not needed in the Jeffries tube because I did not want to go to the Jeffries tube. Yeah. Okay. No, he understands. Okay, good. I didn't know if he got that or <laughs> No, there's, there's, wasn't it Barkley? Who was it that had like a fear of enclosed spaces and they couldn't yep. stand the Jeffries tube? Garrick. Like, was also oh, it was also Garrick. Garrick. Very oh, much yeah. Garrick. Oh, Garrick. Oh, Garrick. oh, man. Where Garrick was stuck in the wall and he was trying I'm to. Just, right. I'm just. Yeah. Enclosed spaces. John Lazar so had a fear. Not a, not of a fear. It's not that bad children. when you get used That's to them. That's what I'm thinking. Kids. He was a pretty kid. He was found in a. He phrased, shut up, so and so. He was a pretty kid. He was a pretty kid. He I have no idea what you're talking about. It makes the whole thing. I did not have a lot of respect. He's a friend. He's a friend. Let's see. A friend of the show, I should say. Um, whether he knows it or so not. So true. <laughs> what are we doing? Extended task. Uh, okay. Lord. So extended task. So words. each task Go on the work here. track, which is all right. Bro. <sighs> you guys ready for this? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Give it right. to us. So uh, extended tasks have a few additional facts. Okay, so you're gonna have a work track, a magnitude from one to five, and a resistance. I'm gonna call the resistance. Is gonna. I'll put the resistance at two. Woo. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all good. You know why the resistance is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, Useless. Mm -hmm. I have to say it. It has no. Okay. Of anybody here. An extended task also has a base difficulty, which is used for all tasks to overcome the extended task. I'm going to put the base mm. difficulty at. We'll say I'll, mm, I'll put it at. I'll put it at three. So I'm going to make it challenging. This will be a challenging extended task. Okay. Yeah, right. I should say so. Yes. I mean, it is the a magnitude. Form. What's that? The magnitude. All right, so yeah, the magnitude, each case. extended task has a magnitude, normally a value from one to five, which represents how large and complex the undertaking of the extended task is. When a character achieves a number of breakthroughs equal to the extended task's magnitude, in this case, it's gonna be three. Kay. Three magnitude. Mm -hmm. The task is completely overcome. Okay. Okay. We can do this. Go so team. Each this. extended task has Sally. a work track, which means something, which means determining how much work needs to be done to overcome the extended task. Whenever a character succeeds at a task, as a part of the extended tasks, it will make an amount of work described below, which is marked off the value. So, whenever you succeed at the task to overcome. There are a few additional steps to follow. You have to roll two action die plus an, an extra action die equal to the discipline used for that task. So who's taking point on the task? What skills are you Which, which task, task the... is this specifically? I am going to say this is going to be a, let me pull out this. It's getting a little bit of a values. rules education tonight for everybody. determination from this. Yes. I'm going yeah. to determine, I'm going to, to say that this is going to be it seems to me like this is going to be a reason. This is definitely going to be a reason engineering role. Ooh, I'm. That's going to be assisted by medicine, and in biology. I'm good at those things. So it sounds to me like the chief should probably take point on the task. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. And I'll allow. One. Is this specifically the task of removing the bio? This is the whole task. This isn't specifically that. This is what the reason why I'm going to let two assists come into this 
is because um, I'm I'm going to say that this is the removal, but it's also the planning, the implementation of like containment fields. It's mm-hmm. every you're utilizing the medical and scientific knowledge of your crew members to help you engineer the extraction of this Got animal. It. Safely remove the gel. That's pack correct. To be for assisting. Re- Replanting. Replanting. Yes. Repotting. Yeah. Uh, my numbers are high on that as well. If you want that for assist, but you might want to use Jiv. I don't know. He so might. The difficulty is assist. going to be three. Huh? What is yours? Um. What, what? will? Uh, oh, Sally be rolling on this? Yeah, yeah. By the way. So I think we're. The, I think we have yeah, the same yeah. numbers. Yeah. I don't I think, think this is an assist. Sally can numbers. assist on this. I think yeah. 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 This would not be something Sally can assist on. Unfortunately, right. this is going to be straight up to the ingenuity and elbow grease of her crew. I think we have so a lot you of guys, I will say this though, Jiv does, and, and Doctor, you would have come to this conclusion as well. Extracting this creature from the ship the way you're going to, it's going to take a lot. This is going to take surgical precision to make sure that the creature is not affected, because there is actually a chance here that the creature could suffer from this. So once this has been extracted, you're going to have a very limited time to put it in the containment field. Mm -hmm. And then the role will also determine whether or not you're able to successfully plug it into the power and help this creature survive. So um, so it has a work track, meaning um, whenever a character succeeds at a task, on the extended task, it will make an amount of work as described below. uh, Marked off from the work track. Okay, so you'll need to basically achieve enough breakthroughs on the work track for this to succeed. And the work track, which is normally 5 to 20, ours is? Uh, the magnitude is 1 to 5. Uh, the work track, you're right, is, uh, if I remember correctly, you said it's 5 to 20? Uh, I'm just reading from that. It's That's the standard <coughs> range. That's right. So I'll put the work track at, I'll put it at 8. And essentially, once we've filled the work track, then the next actions, that's one way to have a breakthrough, is if you fill the work track or you get another success after the work track's been filled. And then the other way to get a breakthrough is five or more work yeah. in one. Okay. Yeah, it's doing really well. But once you've hit eight on that work track, if you haven't achieved a number of successes, then the task will fail. Is that with it? Eek. Eek. If you fill up the work track and you haven't achieved the amount of successes you require, isn't that how that works? Do you have something else? I don't want to get stuck on the rules here. Yeah. But uh, if you've got something else. Well, I think that filling up the work track is our goal, I think. If the work track is filled, or if one or more work is made after the reduction of resistance, the work track was already full, the character achieves the breakthrough. Okay, yeah, so you actually succeed once the work track, uh, if you you finish the work track, you receive a breakthrough. Yeah. You see how that works? Okay. So just go along with us. Um, (coughs) Let's go ahead and jump into this. So... Um, if you're ready, Ren, we can start making rolls here. I'm ready, I think. All right, let me... Give me 20 minutes. Yeah. Dun, dun, so. dun. All right. Oh, yeah. So the difficulty is three. Yep. Um, so if five or more work is made after the reduction of the resistance, that'll be tricky because uh, the resistance, I'm putting it at two. Okay. Don't roll complications. <laughs> mm. All right, guys. <laughs> right. Um, Wait, help me figure it out. Uh, so it sounds like the doctor will assist because of medicine. Doctor yeah. is going to assist. I'm going to allow you both to assist. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay, awesome. Sweet. So go ahead. But the, but the trick is, is that Gina no. still has to roll one success for you guys to be able to add your successes. Gotcha. Yes. And then also, uh, have we figured out if any of Chief Ren's talents will help? Um, that, yes. What are your talents? I have engineering. Are we talking about focuses specifically? Yeah, your focuses. Or my yeah, talents. Focuses, your focuses. We want to know focuses. about both of those, honestly. Um, uh, well, I definitely have engineering and botany, so. I will let your botany and your engineering Perfect. come into play here. Oh, I will yeah, let you so use your focuses cool. for. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I that's, why, that that's why that's Shiv was like, yeah, level. gotta have the chief yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Can I move um, this? So as you all are barreling towards the Klingon neutral zone, there's basically some pretty difficult precision surgery taking place down in the belly of Sally Ride. So let's go ahead and make those rolls and see if you can get plant face dislodged without. Plant face. Uh, Call me if you need me, buddy. My talents or. Yeah. I'm gonna, you have a quick for narrative, I'm going to say you're assisting Jiv right now. You okay, two are regulating the power flows coming and going through that section of the ship. Got it. To make things um, easier. Well, yeah, well, would any of my talents come into this? 
Or is um, that we're okay? I think, what are your, okay, just real quick, tell me what your talents are. Untapped potential, tech expertise, jury rigging, and Dauntless. I know Dauntless isn't, but. No, uh, not jury rigging, tech expertise. I would say untapped potential because that's very that's very generalized. That gets you a reroll or something, That gets right? you, no, that gives you, if you um, succeed as a task that they bought extra die with, uh, you can roll a 1d6 and receive bonus mom momentum equal to the roll of dice. But also it does that with threat as well. Remember that yes. was what we tried it's to do 50, last 50 time. Shot. That was that huge argument. Yeah. We were, or not argument, but like. I would say we tried. hold on to untapped potential unless yeah. things start becoming dire. All right. So uh, with all of pass. the things, how many roll dice am I rolling? Two. You're just going to roll two? Just two. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to burn that momentum. For the focuses. For the know. both focuses so and So focuses just will just let you tap into a extra successes if you roll your discipline yeah. or lower. Okay. Yeah. Am I rolling? Why don't we what am I rolling reason? Or You're rolling for reason the first science. one, and if it if we start building up a pool, then we can start getting spendy. Yeah. Because okay. this is something you're good at. So. Reason and science, and Amy, you are going to be rolling reason and medicine. All right. We're going to start getting threats. So go ahead and make your rolls. Here. One success. Difficulty was three, so let's hope everybody else. I have one. One. That's one. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Do we maybe want to like actually pop that momentum? All right, so three successes. We can. Then you are going to roll two action dice, yeah, specifically two dice action dice. Uh, Here, you can borrow mine. Use, yeah. Okay. The total rolled on these is be the amount of work done. However, because it has resistance, the amount of work done from each task, most extended tasks do not have resistance. So, um, now you need, can we borrow two of yours? Because I think you're going to need to roll six here. It's reduce okay. the work done by the resistance value, or any remaining work is marked off the work track. So go ahead and see how much work is done. Well, we won't know till she rolls. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. go ahead and roll the two dice. Right? Six you're rolling dice. six because it's two plus six. your engineering. Okay. No, she's rolling, uh, oh yes, that's correct. Six. You roll two plus My your discipline for the task. So yeah. it's, yes. in your case, it's engineering. So yes, yeah, six total dice. Tell me what you get. Oh, one, Ooh. two, three, four, five. The fifth one is a uh, an effect. I didn't mean to count for you. I got excited. No, it's okay. <laughs> Please do because I. Uh, don't it's okay. Uh, they look weird. So okay. Effects won't come into play they here, but um, so what's the total number? Five. 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 Reduced by two. Three. So three out of so eight three. on a work track. So yeah. you make it work track. Good, good rolling. Okay, with yeah. those three successes, um, you see um, as the process begins. Six um, Ren, you start meticulously detaching a lot of the conduit uh, circuitry from this bioneural gel pack. And you're watching the power ratings go down as uh, the doctor is monitoring on a tricorder. And Talon, you're on the other side following suit, also monitoring the power flow and the also the bioelectrical uh, energy emanating from the life form itself, that all biological life forms emanate. Um, there's a moment where one of the wires comes loose a little faster than it normally does, and Ren just pauses for a second. You thought, you thought you were gonna drop it for a second. Just because the work that you're doing right now, the way this spiral neural gel pack is inserted into the ceiling of this Jeffrey's tube is that it's, it, it's, become, it's, it's awkward to handle trying to unplug it the yeah. way you're doing it. Y'all didn't see. So didn't wear, not the Y'all didn't see it about to fall, but you were just aware that you had an awkward grip, and for a split second you thought you were gonna lose it and you froze. And that causes everyone watching just to. And you're okay. We're all good. One down. Well That's the first hour of work, <laughs> is going through this. Um, Jiv is monitoring, and you guys um, make the adjustments in the power conduit. Mm -hmm. uh, Jiv calls up from engineering and goes, so far, so good, Captain. Five more hours. All right, great, good work. Keep up the good work, keep us posted. Shiv looks at you, Sage, and just goes, I'm gonna drink after this. <laughs> we got some blood wine down in the Targo Bay. <sighs> not gonna lie. I don't like Klingons, but I love blood wine. <laughs> mm. um, next roll. Go ahead and give me another roll. So we've got- Same stuff? Yeah, yep. three marked off the work track. Woo, right. good job. Come on, green thumb. <gasps> Oh, I think that's three successes. Yeah, yeah. immediately. And that's not a complication, right? <coughs> or no, the complication, complication range is not been. No. Okay. I didn't, yeah. Right. right. So then, no success here. But four. How but about one you, from, doctor? One for me. So four. Yeah, so four. A total successes. of four successes. So yeah. one right. momentum. So you gain a momentum. Woo! Woo! We um, have some options, guys, oh, for okay. how to spend momentum during an extended task. Great. Right. Okay. Also, do I get do my talents come to play when I'm assisting? 
Uh, in this in this particular instance, <laughs> I'm saying no. I'm okay. saying it's only going to uh, apply here. Yeah. Okay, fine. We can. I'm the woman shoved in that Jeffrey <laughs> tube right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to your back. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, probably my feet. <laughs> We, we can bank it, we can do all the normal things with it, but we have a few additional options if we want them. Um, when you generate momentum on in the middle of an extended task, uh, we can spend one momentum uh, to increase the work for this task by one uh, before reductions for resistance, or, which we might want to do, there's piercing, we can spend one momentum to ignore up to two resistance for this task. Uh, that would be rad. Or we can spend one uh, to re-roll work. I re-roll any number of challenge dice from the current task. Or we could bank it and spend it for extra dice on our next I So let's wait and see if we get more. And Here's then a use it for an emergency. Do you have an applicable value? We spend one for piercing. We pop the value. We roll. And we just see if we can get a bunch of momentum because the difficulty, the resistance is lower. Mm. And we already have two autos, auto credits. Or, and we have uh, two auto successes. Can you use an auto success like that on a work rule like this? Yeah, that's the GM. That's not me. Uh, I think I'll allow it here. I do have values that work into the. The reason why I'm going to say yes is just because there's so many. This has become a full on crew effort at this point. You've got the most brilliant minds on ship assisting with this. So I'll, I'll let you have it on this one. So if, saying, want if we want to try to. Try to Expand our pool. Normally, that I think would be the way that we use extended task rules to do that. The system is brilliantly flexible when it comes to stuff like that, so we can we can totally rule it in this case. Sure. So how many total success did you get? Four. 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 Okay, so go ahead and make. That means you've succeeded. You generated momentum. Now we're going to go straight into the challenge dice phase. So go ahead and roll your challenge dice as we're headed into hour two of this surgery. Uh, those count. Two one explosions each. and three. <laughs> That's two. Five. Right? So five. Five. <laughs> five aren't total. Those, aren't those, you said they were something one. else. They're effect dice, but they aren't triggered by anything here unless he grants us a special, like. I see. Then five. Um, so five roll. reduced by two. So unless see. we spent for the piercing. That's correct. If Whoops. you do, remember, if you get five or more, you get breakthroughs. Yeah. So if you burn a momentum here, you'll get a breakthrough. Burn it. Breakthrough. Burn it. I've burn got it. two breakthroughs. Burn. Would we get two breakthroughs? For what? Because if we get five, do you have to go past the end of your work track, or do we get fun for you getting exactly five plus our it's three five minus for on an eight two. work track? What? We filled the work track. Not yet. You've taken three off the work track. You're down to seven on the work track. Uh, did you declare that the work track was ten or eight? I might have written it down wrong. Eight oh, eight. I have I eight. I think you're right. I think it is eight. It was eight. Yeah, I'm sorry. Eight. I wrote I'm down I'm getting 10. excited out of order. Very sad. Eight. So no, no. Seven, six, we don't five. do excitement here. You've got five on the work track now. No one's excited. Well, we just well, don't. are excited. Well, Going so, into was, this task, it's five now. there were five remaining. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So now you're in, now you've got five remaining. So now on the work track, you've achieved five successes, or you've achieved five, yeah. which would lead to a breakthrough. And you're gonna. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you want to? <laughs> you're asking if if you burn that extra mo that extra, you can re you can get rid of the resistance. Mm -hmm. If we burn that and get rid of the resistance, thus doing the full five work, <laughs> have we just accomplished two breakthroughs? Am I reading this right? And by we, I mean mostly you, but I helped a little. I mean, you guys were rolling. We were there. This is a team effort. Yeah, I think I would rule that that in this particular case, yeah, I'd allow that. I mean, yeah, I mean, that you did roll pretty extraordinary here. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and just do that then. Extended tasks and effects. Whoop, whoop. What was the thing Sam was suggesting? Oh, yeah. So if a character achieves a breakthrough and one or more effects were rolled, then an additional breakthrough is achieved. Yeah. Oh. Because oh. I rolled three. And you rolled three. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> so, Captain, they told you that extracting this creature from the Sally Ride was going to take up to six hours. You were contacted on hour number three. And... Now here's the thing. I also know, uh, just from reading history books, just from knowing the history of Starfleet, this is an old engineering trick. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them it's going to take X amount of hours, and yeah. it takes half of that. And, and you then get you contacted. seem impressive. You get contacted. Three hours in, I'm expecting this call at three hours. Like, <laughs> Jim, you get contacted. You got? No, don't be that captain. Let me Rin, guess. Rin wants you to make the call. You granted us triumphant? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, because you guys rolled exceptional awesome. successes. You you rolled ex you rolled the effects and then you spent the momentum to get rid of the resistance for that particular roll. You definitely yeah did the yeah. thing. 
So it was a tricky. It wasn't quite as difficult as you thought it was going to be. Um, within three hours, um, it was fun, is what Jiv it was. contacts the bridge <laughs> and says, "Let our captain know, Chief." You got it, <clears throat> Captain. Yes, Martinez here. We did it. <sighs> it's about hour three. Tell Jiv he's slipping up. I was expecting it to be done sooner. Well done. <laughs> Jiv just goes. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> Ooh. I'd like to see you move from the from What was that, Chief Rand? <laughs> Sorry, nothing, sir. <laughs> I, mean, I should have well, warned you. You shouldn't have given me permission to speak my mind. But thank you, sir. Good that day. That was just in the, in the meetings, in the briefings in the morning. All right. Yeah. So we're going to do some scene jumping here. The creature is successfully extracted from the belly of Sally Ride. It is healthy and it maintains itself. You managed to plug it into, did you decide dump shuttle or? Yes, okay. dump shuttle, not dump your shuttle. Well, I'm gonna be say this, because you guys used, you, you guys uh, did such a brilliant job in extracting the creature from the Sally Ride, you added, You managed to find uh, that despite the fact that the, the Orion <coughs> power core, the miniature warp core inside of this thing, um, is not up to Starfleet standards. It still functions as an excellent antimatter collider, and you're able to use it to power the bioneural gel pack easily and to create a simple environment. Um, essentially, you convert the dump shuttle into a tiny green room. Oh, um, that's in the so middle cute! Of the Best bay. possible use of it. Yeah. Um, and which it's matches so the much colors better than just sending it perfectly. to get exploded. And it's green. Um, and uh, after about 45 minutes of this doctoring it into the shuttle, um, Jiv wipes his brow and says, I'll be in the galley, and turns and leaves. And we're going to have a couple of scene jumps. Mm -hmm. um, over the next couple of days, um, as business moves forward on the ship, you guys are constantly monitoring the creature. It seems to have stabilized quite well on the dump shuttle, and in fact has shown signs of growth, despite the fact that there is no sunlight, which, again, is indicative of the of way the this cave. creature lived inside yes. the Genesis cave. Um, at one point, Jiv creates an artificial uh, light for it, and it doesn't seem to change its growth pattern at all. No. It looks like it adapts with or without, mm -hmm. and it continues to grow. Um, you do notice that some of the roots look like that they're spreading. After some scans, the roots have begun to spread deeper into the bioneural gel pack, and some of it looks like it's actually fusing with a bit of the metallurgy that mm. encases the outer parts of the gel pack itself. Um, even though that this creature seems to have an alarming rate of evolution and growth, it looks like it has slowed itself down and is either consciously taking its time or it's running into resistance as it grows. Either way, it looks completely healthy and is on its track. Um, you're slightly distracted from the growth process. Um, the, this, this plant creature has kind of become the, the new hollow target of the ship. <laughs> um, you're hearing crewmates talk about it in the galley, people mentioning... Um, Different nicknames. People yeah. have come up with different plant nicknames. Plant face. For the most part, plant face seems to have stuck. <laughs> different departments. Um, I don't know. I'm hearing a lot of Jennies. Don't say. <laughs> so. Jenny it's plant um, face. Right. Yeah. Jenny. No. I'm cool with this. Jenny plant face. So I have a, I have a question. Jenny for plant you. face. Uh, Jenny ask plant it away. My question is, when Starfleet confiscated our data from our encounter with Regular One, the original mm -hmm. life form, Project yes. Genesis, <clears throat> did they they wiped our computers? Yes. So do we even have a remnant? of the life form signature of the original? No. Doctor is only going based off of what she remembers from Memory. scanning it. Brilliant. I can try so, and find it. Then this is my, <laughs> no, I don't want you to find it. <laughs> okay. Here's what I'm thinking. Nope. I don't want to report this into Starfleet until we get to the Shackleton Expanse. Mm. We're a few days away. And then I would okay. assume then I, I could send a subspace message. You Yes. Okay. You're approaching the Federation Klingon neutral zone. Okay. So my next course of act, my next question is, mm -hmm. When you arrive at the Federation Klingon neutral zone, the next priority, the, the next action you need to do is you basically need to signal to the Klingon outpost on the other side of the neutral zone you're oh, okay. crossing. Okay, great. But my first question is, what are what are the plans of the USS Sally Ride? Are you planning on proceeding through the travel corridor that the Klingons have provided to the Shackleton Expanse, or are you going to look for <laughs> Zadis? Hmm. What has the crew decided with regards uh, to that? Because there was talk of that in the staff meeting. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just well, we curious what the plans well, are. Well, the USS Sally Ride cannot foresee getting new information about the location of Lynn's Addis. 
right? We can't. You do have that. access we to have a, a particular. We have calls that I'm interested in making. There sure. is a call you can make. There you are do two have calls access. that yeah. I'm yeah. interested there are two in calls making make. because the other would be to. It, this is the Klingon neutral zone. Mm -hmm. We want intelligence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's worth. It's you could try. And if for no other reason, that is also a low key way of getting in touch with Klingon officials in a back channel kind of manner. Basically, we're back channeling here. I see. So it doesn't take them by surprise. We can take their temperature, and also we can see if they have an interest in us scrubbing their problem for them. So you wanted to contact That's a good way of putting it. Klingon intelligence. Yeah, our contact. Oh, gotcha. As gotcha. well <laughs> as our Orion intelligence. Can I be in the room when you contact him? So when what, sexy, so stupid, sexy. Stuff. We we do have <laughs> at some point a command team with Sage in the room. Yes, <laughs> so that is a meeting that's going to happen. So oh. question, Eric: Would we announce that to <laughs> to the Klingons before we go through? Like, oh, heads up, we're going to call a Klingon intelligence officer. You can. I mean, this is how we're doing. Doc has given you access to contact him. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly because of the the rescue effort that you were engaged in. Mm -hmm. Um. It's not an official channel. No. You're not contacting no. Klingon intelligence. You're you're contacting a Klingon intelligence agent. Yeah. Yeah. So you can contact Kadok, yeah. or you can announce your presence and then just go looking. I mean, it's it's really up to you guys. But I will say that oh, wandering off the beaten options. path once you're in Klingon <laughs> space is going to be very dangerous. We're not doing that. I'm just saying. We're announcing to just you know. to the Empire. Okay. That we are hi. We're the USS Sally Ride. We have been approved to go through this channel. We are heading to the Shackleton Expanse, and that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to end that that message, that subspace relay, and then Commander Rue is probably going to make some calls. Okay. I don't know what's going to happen after that. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's going to happen after that. So then can I assume you arrive at the Federation Klingon Neutral Zone yes. and come to a full stop? All right. Um, you guys come out of warp after a full week's travel. Um, Starfield spiral comes to an end. Sally Ride has been traveling at warp almost nonstop, and uh, her warp drive doing just fine. That's yeah. what she does. Um, the nacelles <laughs> flatten out as Sally Ride enters full impulse, mm -hmm. and you come to an open area of space that has, in the past, been the source of some pretty contentious encounters between two great governments. Um, as you come to a full stop, um, you send out a hailing frequency. Mm -hmm. You receive a reply. Um, there is it's text messaging only, mm -hmm. giving you uh, basically the the, the message oh, that you receive like is that, that <coughs> the message I don't like you receive, this in writing. <laughs> the message you receive from the Klingon neutral zone is that you are authorized to travel through the corridor. You are not allowed to deviate from the path, and that you will be expected to stop for inspection along the way. Of course, um, and that you are allowed to proceed. Great. We'll send back, <clears throat> we'll fire back a message that basically says like, thank you, Starfleet is appreciative. We will be sure to uh, look forward to any of our uh, Klingon inspections. We welcome all uh, stops and thank you again for, for cooperating with us. Thank you. Standard Starfleet protocol. All right. <clears throat> yeah. No reply. Great. Right. Got a high I did face. You guys begin to move into the Klingon neutral zone. What? Uh, what's the next course? You're gonna make your phone calls now, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Who are you what calling up? first? Um, I'm calling Kadok first. Okay. Once you start entering Klingon space, uh, where are you making this connection to from? Or the bridge? I'm just curious. It's fine if you do. I just wanted to know where this was at. I'll I take need to it know in the first officer's office on deck two. For, okay. <laughs> are you gonna be there for that, or is this? I just need to know who's in the scene. No. Nope. Okay. So plausible deniability. No. Yep. Commander, you enter your first. <laughs> you enter your your quarters. Um, your quarters. Your office. Your I have. Office. I have an office. Yeah. I so you go to your yeah. office, swivel the data pad around. Um, you receive an indication with. You see the Imperial Klingon uh, seal of Kalis, and uh, an acknowledgement that your signal has been received and it's standing by for a transmission. Um. In other words, Kadok is answering you. 
I am not the captain of the Sally Ride. The Sally Ride has no official position on any Orion infiltrators whose presence might impugn the honor of the Klingon Empire. Wait, is this a text message you're sending, or are you speaking to him? Um, Have you initiated the communications? Because all yeah. I'm describing is when yeah. you walked in, you saw that he's waiting for you to basically pick up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whatever so, is necessary to send a message, this is the message I am sending. Okay. Well, basically, I what am happens is relatively medium neutral. When here. you when you enter your yeah. quarters and you see that and you activate it, you see Kadok's face yep. come up on the screen, and he says, "Commander," and Good waits. I commence saying. Okay. You say you're, you yeah. you give your spiel. Yeah. And says, "Ah, I see." So you wish to know more information about this Malgog, was it? I do. We have had reports of illicit activity within the Klingon Empire. Their actions are dishonorable. You'll get no arguments from me, Commander. I would like to see them all killed brutally. Preferably a public ex execution. <laughs> and the Klingon Empire? Klingon Empire does not give a damn about criminals right now, Commander. They're more interested in killing Cardassians. And they're not too fond of those who wear the uniform that you're wearing right now, either. Present company excluded. Appreciated. You will find friends on your route through the corridor, Commander. The way to the Shackleton expense shouldn't be too much of a hazardous one. While there's a lot of us that do not appreciate the stance the Federation have taken... There are some of us that find it funny. <laughs> Understood. Nonetheless, there is a Federation officer on one of that rat's ships. <clears throat> We're interested in reclaiming him. I see. I do owe you a favor. It will be difficult to track this Malgog down. He has been very good at keeping low. But I am very good at sniffing out a Targ when I see one. I'll see what I can do for you, Commander. We don't have that many resources. We're too busy trying to stave off the Dominion threat. But where I can, I will help. If you have any other points of contact, it might be a good idea to cast a wide net. Certainly. It's only good intelligence practice, isn't it, Kadok? Indeed. May you die well, Commander. Kapla. Kapla. Deactivates. Okay. Abruptly. <laughs> True to Klingon form. Captain? Martinez here. Gadok's gonna start sniffing. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> if he gets a bite on the line, I don't think the Empire is going to be much help, and it's not going to be easy to deviate from course. I understand. It's not a priority for them right now. And it's not a priority for the Federation either. The Federation. They're not going to be willing to spend political capital on it. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Kadok does suggest that we contact other sources of intelligence. All right. I'm happy to do that, Captain, but if you would prefer to do it yourself, I would understand completely. Uh, no, you can go ahead and do that. <laughs> of course, sir. Thank you, Commander. Keep me posted. Hi, sir. I can assist. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to come to my office for a meeting, we can do that. Damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's like a hardcore vice principal vibe going on here. <laughs> in the hole. If you've lured Sajin with a series of beautiful headshots of Zazarit like lying in a hallway. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I remember him. Oh, I'm going to have to get this ship under control. Here okay. we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Picking up and then, ooh, I have one more call to make. Ooh. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> you send out the call. I'm hacking yeah. in right now to eavesdrop. Just kidding. Um, I'm not. I'm not. That was a joke. I just wanted to watch. Go ahead. It takes a few <laughs> minutes through subspace, but through a relay, you get a reply. 
And a few moments after you see transmission being received, uh, up on a view screen, it's a little static, but you see the face of a very smug and handsome Orion staring back at you from the view screen. Um, oh, yeah. He doesn't say anything. He oh. just looks at you when the screen comes up. I have his knife out. Okay. And I'm just kind of casually flipping it yeah. while I talk. I'm going to assume that's foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> From such a distance. I'm a dreamer. Oh, God. You know, we never did see who won on that battle to retake your ship. Good to know it's you. Oh, yeah. We won. Our My king. first officer. He ate well that night. How are things? Orion politics. Well, they haven't changed too much, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Situation is somewhat the same, unfortunately. We Getting my ship back was a good way of making headway, but I'm not exactly, the, like I said before, the most favorite of the Orion's children, so to speak. Trust me. I understand. How are you doing? You... Seem different somehow. Maybe it's just because I'm not standing in front of you and I don't feel like at any moment you might kiss or kill me. <laughs> ah, now who's engaging in foreplay? <laughs> I don't ever stop, to be honest. Then when do you get to the fun? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to know? Oh, God. Enlighten me. I will. <laughs> but while you're enlightening me, we went through those files that you gave us from your person. Did they help? They were useful proof of life. They didn't give us something that we still need. What do you need? Location. That I can't help you with. Nalgog is really good at covering his tracks. Better than me. It's one of the ways he stayed one step ahead of his enemies. I would need a network to organize some kind of search for him. I've got some basic ideas of where he's come and where he's gone. But like any good smuggler, pirate, mass murderer, he's pretty good at mixing it up to make sure no one can find his pattern. Then again, you do have a Vulcan. We do. We are good on the hunt, but we have a road that we're going down. So what I'm interested in is flushing him out. I forgot, you're a tactician, a strategist. I'm not used to that. I'm used to impulse. Flushing him out seems like a pretty smart idea. What did you have in mind? Well, I imagine involved there would need to be bait. What are you thinking? Well, first, tell me. What would he be interested in going after? That he'd be willing to venture onto our path. What does he want enough to come and get it? That I think I can help you with, but I'll need some time. Give me, give me about 36 hours. Sounds like a plan. I look forward to talking to you again, 36 hours. Yes, I suspect you do. And he kills transmission. I mean, did everybody just see Groot flirting? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Captain. <clears throat> Return 
Jin is here. That was quick. He misses you. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Commander. What's what's the, what's the update? What's the word? Sir, we're going to try to flush him out. Okay. We cannot safely deviate from our path without potentially engaging Klingons. We would be at a significant disadvantage. Mm-hmm. That isn't what we want to do. All right. Zadzret's going to try to figure out what he wants, what okay. Malgog wants. Okay. And we'll see if maybe that can persuade him onto our route. Bring him to us. And maybe if we're real lucky, we'll be able to bring him down yeah. and get what we need. We'll get our man. We'll get our guy. Thank you, Commander. Hi, yes, sir. About 12 hours. You go through a full duty shift, checking in on Plant Face <laughs> in the green room or the, the, the greenhouse. Um, <clears throat> okay, just real quick, I wanted to there to have been two things that happened sure. in those few days before we hit, or even after, it doesn't matter. Sure. Number one, I will have uh, issued a ship-wide permission to celebrate a little bit once we extracted that. Sure. I'll kind of like update the ship, like, hey, the scientist nerds did a real cool thing. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free when your it's ship is done. It's a ship full of scientists. It's, so, everyone's down for celebrating. <laughs> when the your ship is done. The break out, you know, yeah. the synth hall. And, Beautiful. Uh, Quite right. Yeah. And in, in the Jim excitement and everything. Sent the hall. Second thing. Yeah. Uh, actually, three things. The second thing. Put an engineering team on the uh, the dumpier, but not, no, not the dumpiest, but yeah. the dumper, dump the shuttle. Dumpier. The non, yeah. So that happened, right? right? S- that's yeah. Where yeah. That's good. Shuttle. Yep. Third thing. I would like to put a team of scientists, mm-hmm. engineers, I'm sure we can figure this thing out. Yeah. Bottle the blood wine. Okay. So that we yes. have bottles. Yes. Oh, and that's it's been not done. You can barrel. do that. Yeah. Great. We've also checked Jim. and scrubbed the remaining bioneural gel packs. Great. By the thank way, you. Yeah, that's and what I was going to say. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you for bringing that up. I was going to report back to you because I, I did a yep. roll here with Jiv. Um, no contamination, Beautiful. apparently, in okay, any so of the it's contained so far. Um, Jiv and the engineers come up with a brilliant way of uh, utilizing uh, transporter technology yes. to beam liquid into the bottles. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And just to be safe, wow. I don't know how... It takes forever, but they're going to do it. <laughs> I don't know how well like a, a, a Klingon like scanning um, uh, scanning would work, but uh, I want to keep basically like the shipment of of bottles in my personal captain's quarters. Sure. Okay. Except for the one that we'll have at every stop, however many okay. stops there are, like that will be yeah, in... Yeah, scan individually. Yeah, like, that will be shipping. in okay. like... The, the, you know, the that you can hand off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we can be like, oh, welcome aboard. Here's a... Oh, look. That sort of thing. Yeah. And um, I'd like Talon's assistance in making sure that we've figured out some way that we can scan for spores uniquely identifiable to our new plant friend to make sure we're not, you know, bottling a bunch of them and about to hand them out since... Maybe working with internal systems. You're basically using this smart. time to scan the entire ship to make sure there's no yep. further contamination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we need to okay. figure out... Okay, for that. And we also need to figure out if the clean-ons scan the ship, are they going to be able to... Scan detect. and detect plant face. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And make sure that's not going to happen so they don't. Sage with the wind. Yeah, so we gotta protect the plant days. face. Mm. Did we um, ever. T- uh, so we're not turning back to. We're <laughs> oh, not I sent telling a, Starfleet. I, or? I, I did send a report. Okay. Ooh. Through subspace. About your discovery with the plant and yes. everything else like that. Right. Okay. But here's what I sent was just to sum up. We discovered a new life form, a new pe- uh, plant life form. Um, that, uh, or basically just like a new plant. It'll be like, it'll seem like a real we low key botany report. Do you know what I mean? That's what it'll come across. So it aligns my medical I helped report. you, I helped you make it really boring. <laughs> yes, because you're a boring botanist. Thank yes. you. This That's is great. what happens when you submit your report. Yeah. yeah. While all of this is taking place and while mm-hmm. your role is taking place to scan the ship and everything and you guys are waiting for Zazrit to get back in contact with you mm-hmm. and you're waiting for Kadok to get back in contact with you, you receive a reply message directly from the office of Admiral Norval Nash. Mm-hmm. Not from anyone else, which is a little unusual, but okay. your mission report simply says, confirmed, you may proceed, Captain. And that's it. Everything in the subtext, Captain, mm-hmm. huh. Judging the conversation that the two of you have had with Normal Nash, <clears throat> specifically because you know you the Sally Ride was sent out here for exploration. He's um, got our backs, yeah. Cool. There's a subtext to the to how much is being left out of that reply. 
He I'll let you. I'll yank let you assume back as where you we mean. could get sent out again to the mm-hmm. war. Yeah. Are, you, are you sure you want me to? Break but that's all it says. Nash just replies. Affirmative. Affirmative. You may proceed. Got it. Um. Okay. So, this is actually going to be a Talon roll w- assisted by uh, the Doctor. You're going to be scanning the entire ship to make sure none of the other spores or plant life has infected the ship. The bioneural gel packs, which were the most likely places to be hiding, are clean. So, Talon, um, in this instance, I'm going to have you roll. Um, and the Sally Ride can, I would, I would say the Sally Ride cannot assist here. Yikes. The reason being is because you cannot, if you're, um, they're using personal track orders yes. rather than ship internal systems. It's almost like a Lest level one the ships diagnostic. Be compromised and oh. like, do you have a problem? Oh. I don't have a problem. It's it's almost like a legit level one diagnostic where it's not the ship. It's you guys are literally taking it apart, and so this is going to be very extensive. <sighs> but I'm you're happy able. to do this. But should it be me or one of the engineers? Well, no. This is a scan. Okay. This is Great. just a scan. So I'm not. Momentum. Um, so this is using personal devices. I just want to check one thing because I do get one of my talents also applies to tricorder, but I just want to oh. make sure this is the one. So Talon, you are of course once again. Yep. It's the roll of the game. You're going to be rolling oh. reason and science. Sensors. Thank God I'm um, rolling. Technical expertise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's just with computers the sensors, and sensors, but there's one that I can use with the tricorder as well. So I guess if it's not technical expertise, it must be. Um, maybe it's just the science officer one. Hold, we're checking something? Yeah, I think it's just the science officer. Just the science officer? Yeah, and tricord. I didn't uh, write All right, are we ready? I'm going to go ahead and say that, yes, I can. <laughs> sure you me? can double check, thank you. Uh, the difficulty on this is going to be three. All right, may so I? So once again, it's a challenging yes, roll. Yes, cool with it. Yep, yep. yep. Go ahead. Buy a die? All right, cool. This there is going to be, yes, this is going to take a while. All right. It's all on the shiny floor. Um, this would be another good time for an extended task, but I'm just going to push through. So go ahead and just make your roll. We'll just have this. Ah! You're going to be scanning the key components of the computer systems because the only contact the spores would come in contact with, or the only contact the spores would have made are with the vital systems first, is what you're looking at, because the environmental controls, they kind of connect to all of some of the more vulnerable points of the ship. Mm -hmm. So we're just basically saying that in order to expedite the process, Talon is going to start with, like, Essentially, Sally writes pressure points to mm-hmm. make sure that everything is functioning properly. This yeah. will take about 12 hours. So go ahead and okay. just do, a, we'll just, a, for now, we're just gonna have this be a straight up roll. And the difficulty is three. Two success. Am I rolling reason medicine? Uh, yeah, you're assisting. So reason, reason medicine here. Yes. All right, so. All right. Um, Using your knowledge of biological life forms and what to look for, especially because you're familiar with the DNA pattern of this creature, and using your ability to scan for biological life forms and deduce, what you're able to put together is is that there were other spores that spread throughout the ship, and none of them survived the environmental system. Interesting. Um, you managed to spend the next, I'd say, 12 hours basically um, <laughs> pushing yourselves against the wall of staying awake and uh, not getting any rest, but after a thorough scan of the ship, yes, there were other spores that died. Um, and the yeah. doctor's okay without the rest. Mm. <laughs> what? Mm. That can't be medically recommended. Yeah, the doctor's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rue's just looking for double standards for the doctor. Oh, <laughs> Concussion. I have to yeah. Um, Do, are there remnants of those spores still? Mm-hmm. You can get them. Yeah, you, they get are them. Con- they are contained biological let's, samples. Let's they clean it's, them up. They're get, so let's get them out of the system. They're so minute that still we saw what this thing can do. Yeah, they're, but these these spores are so they're microscopic on a level that it, you can understand now why Starfleet intelligence missed them. Right, despite the thorough like electron pers- microscope. Yeah, despite Maybe, despite how thorough wounded, they but were. But you have to admit they're wonderful. Whether or not they are wonderful, I do not wish for them to destroy our ship. Fair enough. Um, so in about the next, I would say, 24 hours have passed. You guys have been sitting on the Klingon Federation uh, neutral zone. At one point, sensors detect about eight light years away a Brel-class bird of prey on a patrol. Uh, on the Klingon side of the neutral zone does pause and scan. Though it 
goes into a long range scan mm -hmm. and then begins to move off or maybe it cloaks, but you lose contact with it. Do we hail it? Is there any hailing? Yeah. You could raise the signal, but from the looks of it, it's probably a patrol. It's probably a Brel is usually a scout ship. They're just letting us know that they sure. see Before us. Before that happens, yeah. can I just say, I have an idea. know you're here and they have Want noticed that you're not crossing. We that we, did Jenny yeah. plant yeah, face? Can I was about to say, I have an idea to try and mask a uh, plant face. Uh, is there any way to um, uh, just to kind of like to bring a whole bunch of greenery and different <laughs> herbs and different things inside the the dump shuttle to make it actually look like an actual green room? Go ahead. So if so, if a Klingon or someone actually scanned, it they would just see like Sage? one of our crew members started a hydroponics bay about a month back. Okay, well, and so we could we see could, about transferring. Some so of Sage, that. I would say go ahead and make a. Uh, I'd recommend clustering them outside the shuttle just because I'm worried about the possible contaminating effects. I think uh, that is certainly check. what we're doing. We could, oh, put, sorry, a, control we control could put a force field around it or something. Okay. Just, to, whoops, sorry. Give me a control secure, uh, engineering check. We're going to want some sort of force field. Oh, I'm sorry, con. That Make is that a just con. a thing that's con. happening, yeah. Control. Con? Yeah. Well, one success. <laughs> control con. Boo. Difficulty is one. Oh, then fantastic. Yeah, hit it. Fantastic. I mean, I just moved, <laughs> this, fantastic. I just just, moved a couple of ferns, you guys. I'm just, I'm just basically trying, now to, it's between I'm trying to find out what Sage knows here. Two. So oh. you, how many successes did you get? One. Okay. A Brel class bird of prey, there's no way it has a sensor suite that's going to detect the difference between this plant and any other plant you've got mm -hmm. on board. It would have to be up really, really close. And this is just what you know from basic sensors. Right. As somebody who has got such a strong engineering background. Right, right, right. And they don't know would, the significance of this anyway. They would have to be True, something. Because nobody this, does. Yes, it would, have to be a, it would have to be a science vessel like Sally Ride, or it would have to be very, very close and know exactly what it was looking for. I'm, so, I'm more concerned about a Klingon boarding the ship for an inspection kind of and oh, suspecting right, something right. where we're just like, oh, well, we have this right. dump shuttle, so we just turned it into a green room. You know, like we can yeah, just much yeah. better than why down. is this thing very special? Why is this in one so, plant inside? <laughs> right, go ahead and keep that in mind then. Okay. Yeah. And that'll be something that you're going to make as a project, basically, to okay. try to figure out a way to mask. That shouldn't be too a big green of a problem. room. I like yeah. that. Um, so after about 24 hours have passed, you were contacted by Kadak. Um, comes up on the main view screen on the bridge. Kadak, unless you're taking it elsewhere. When we get the call, I ask the captain if you'd like it, like me to take this in my office. That's up to your discretion, Commander. We could have you off screen if you would like to be in the room. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So he's basically standing in the doorway. Not on camera, mm -hmm. so he can okay. hear. But we will be taking this in my office. Okay. So once again, Kadok comes up on the screen and says, Commander, I think I have some good news for you. It would be appreciated. There was an incident on one of our border colonies towards the edge of the Romulan neutral zone. Always near the neutral zone. Anyway, suffice to say, there was a firefight between what the locals were describing as two rival gangs. But our intel reports that it was in fact a weapons deal that went bad. Can you guess who was involved in that weapons deal, Commander? I believe I could. Well then, now I'm going to have to pull some strings to see if I can get you deviated from course. If that could be accomplished, it'd be much appreciated. At least, we would be very thankful for the coordinates of that incident. Any vector? Not far from where your location is now, actually. It's towards the corner of Romulan Klingon Federation space. Apparently, Malgog likes to dip his fingers into all the pies, as humans like to say. Cut off. We did notice a Burrell class making itself known that it was nearby us. If she was traveling uncloaked, then that's exactly what she was doing. Wouldn't expect anything less. Would you say it's likely that we would be getting check-ins of that nature as we travel along our current course? I'll be honest with you, Commander. You're entering Klingon territory. 
There might be a captain or two that wants to make a name for themselves, and destroying one of the latest starship vessels to come out of Starfleet might just do that. Though Galron would never sanction such a thing unless there was outright war declared. Certainly not. All I'm saying, Commander, is you're authorized to pass through Klingon space. Just watch your back. The Klingon Empire has been guilty of putting fools at the center chair more than a few times. I couldn't possibly comment, but Kadak, if such captain spotted a rat, might they be interested in stomping it? I wouldn't trust it, Commander. My suggestion to you, since it's not far from the borders, find another ship. Find another way across the neutral zone. Don't go as Starfleet officers. I can see to it that your journey might be easier, and I can't arrange a Klingon vessel because then you'll be identified. If you can find some other way across the border, then I can arrange... Well, let's just say I can make sure that the Klingon Empire's back happens to be turned at just the right time. If he's still in the area, I can send you the coordinates of where he was last spotted, but you'll have to move fast. This is much appreciated. We're very... I am very grateful. Hmm. He activates, deactivates the screen. Looks at you the way he would look at somebody who's picked up the scent of their prey and just smiles that toothy, sharp grin of the Klingons and then deactivates. All right, sir. We have some options now. Yeah, looks like we might have some planning to do. Mm. Well, another... You receive a transmission coming in. From whom? Yes! <gasps> Captain. Commander, are you going to answer that? <laughs> Unless you'd like to. Who I'll do it? it. Who is it? I'm not there. Damn it. Your favorite. No, go ahead and answer it. I'm going to stay standing in this doorway, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sir. Okay. <laughs> you see Zazret's face again. Commander. You're faster than I thought. I was running into some dead ends, so I tried some unconventional means to find out the information that I might need to help me uncover the information that you might need. What have you uncovered? You're not going to like this. Try me. I just intercepted your communication with the Klingon intelligence operative. Oh. If you need a ship and a way in, I've got one. Come on over. See you soon. Yes! And that's where we have to stop tonight's episode. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need y'all to give Hector space. When he's Intercepted doing this. your transmission. Okay. Yes. Zazard apparently was capable of listening in to a coded transmission from a Klingon intelligence operative mm. to Federation Starship. That's Interesting. That's yeah, so, as a security officer, I'm gonna be working right on that later because apparently they're... Interestingly, now I'm going to have to do a security sweep of our yeah. communication yeah. systems. Yeah. I'm sure that won't uncover anything untoward. Why yeah. are you looking at me? <laughs> the roles will tell. I we have see. absolutely hey, no idea. I just want a week without any meeting with the captain. So um, I got super I mean, lucky. I gotta, I gotta say, I, I didn't think we were gonna <laughs> no, see Zazzard for a while. Yeah, I'm but, really uh, glad we did. But uh, you, you guys brought him back. Apparently, through sheer force of will. <laughs> You're yeah. welcome, honestly, internet. <laughs> that was this. not in my. That was not in back. my plans. The stars want. It's what the in stars our plans. Want. I will not. Uh, I, you guys, brought, I did not expect to see Rel again so soon. I did not expect to see. I mean, it, you brought us to 138. I mean, you what guys kept pushing the story that direction. I'm like, what? I mean, can Did there be like, like spicy scenes? scenes? Excuse me, Eric. Can there be like another file in my computer that's like, I know who you're looking for, and then stupid sexy like Zazarek keeps coming up to yeah. it. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> they know everything about me. It's just it's a file that says Zazarek Beaudoir. Yeah, and it's a yeah. 
I've it. hacked into his ship and got some, <laughs> got some pictures uh, he had. Some <laughs> Amy, that, that expression is giving gift. That. <laughs> I feel like there may be a couple gifts from this. Yeah. Instant Sage can have a crush too. Well, that'll conclude she tonight's episode. We actually we're ran over and it wasn't a pain in the ass because yeah. it's only 1020. Sorry. But still, thank you, crew. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as always, we owe the crew beer and we've yet to deliver on that. That's, oh my How about some blood wine? At least three we got a little beer. beer. We got some know, blood wine for you guys beers. down in the Targo three, Bay. Three six packs. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching tonight's episode of Shield of Tomorrow. Tune in next Monday night at 7 p.m. Hashtag it looks, super sexy. That's it right. looks like a rescue operation is being staged, Hashtag which is not being sanctioned by it. the Federation. We're oh, yeah. going. You're going full Kirk already. It's already oh, happening. I can't already wait. happening. I can't wait. Doing I already got do. like a slick black leather jacket. I'm gonna put on like. <laughs> Still here. Oh. Yeah. Somebody should let um, Matt Myra know down in engineering that we are done with the show. He needs to go home. So. <laughs> He's we'll let Matt Myron know so he doesn't just, I mean, God knows. No, one more diagnostic of the, the yeah. deuterium. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next Monday night. Until then, hailing frequencies are closed. Thanks for tuning in to Shield of Tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. We'll be here every week with the ongoing adventures of the USS Sally Ride. New episodes air on Geek & Sundry Twitch and Alpha every Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to see more, you can start your free 30-day trial on projectalpha.com. Yeah.